Well, channel milestones, right? Let's talk channel milestones. Channel milestones. There was the first time that I took to the air live on Podbean. We talked about that last week, that Christina convinced me what I need to be doing, education, right? There was the Podbean Wars that taught me exactly how toxic a community could get. Um, there was deciding to leave the Podbean network and come over to Twitch. There was the first time I made affiliate. There was the thousand mark. It was 300 episode mark. Karina, thank you for the resub at tier two. Um, and today, today we hit a new channel, uh, a new channel mark. We, we hit a new community mark. Today marks the era of where we have to start what I'm going to call S&T. Sanctions and terminations. Although if you're really, really crafty, if you're really clever and you've been paying attention today, you may be able to understand the hidden, hidden meaning between S and T, right? We don't need to talk about that outright. You don't need to put that in chat. If you know, you know. But thus enters the era of S and T, sanctions and terminations, right? We now have to, as a community, create a rule set that everybody has to agree and abide by, or else they will be removed or separated from the community. Yes. This is, this is a new era. This is a new era. We have grown to the point where we, we can have outside, we have outside elements. We have non-anarchists. We have people who don't get the program as it were, people that don't understand that we as anarchists already have increased examination upon us by outside forces. Uh, sweet, that is just fine. Um, so, those rules are being crafted. We're working on them. They will ha there will be a rules channel. We will have to, I will transform the landing page that already has agreements as you come into the Discord server. Um, and we are going to have to enforce them. There will be methodologies for enforcement. Um, and yeah, we will, we will be moving forward from there. Um, it is what it is. Um, yes. So I imagine that some people will be leaving our community within the next month. I, I don't see a couple of people surviving. Um, what those rules will be, will when, when they have been worked on and tightened up and when we have uh, something workable, hey, Crix, um, I will post them publicly on the server. Um, <laughs> and... For review, so everybody knows what's coming down the pike. Honestly, I don't think the majority of you will ever be affected by these rules. I don't foresee the vast majority, the overwhelming majority of the community as it stands ever being affected by these rules that we're putting into place. Honestly, I don't. But there are a few people that will not survive. They won't make it past those rules. So, it is what it is. But... Yes, we've, we've entered a new era as a community. We're going to have a member review committee of some sort. We're going to have a panel of people. It will most likely follow the pattern of infraction warning, infraction warning, infraction. You go before the panel. And they'll decide whether you stay or go. And based on your track record based on your infractions, based on what you have to say for yourself, the ban will just carry. And the ban will be universal. If you get banned on the Discord, you will get banned on the Twitch channel. That's how it's going to work. Um, so, yep, that's how it's going to be. <laughs> 
Sweet. Rule number one, you must recognize that labor creates value. Um, uh, I lost my shit. I lost my shit today. Honestly. Bobby, I almost did. I fucking cussed him out. I, I yelled at the doctor and fucking straight up cussed him out. Straight up. Like, yeah. I, f I snapped. I snapped. <laughs> if I read, I will never be returning to Podbean weather. I know I'm not a fan of absolutes. Trust me. I'm never going back to Podbean. Um, oh, boo. Uh, cat. That's a shame. Um, Karina. <sighs> oh, cupcake. That's not even cupcake. This is that's that's. It's ancillary to what else happened today. Um, the doctor just wasn't fucking listening. The doctor was not... How do I not get cancelled? He's a fucking old Chinese dude. Like, Chinese national. Like, import. You know, immigrated to America, right? He's... Getting through to him sometimes is difficult. And, well, why didn't you tell me this? I fucking told you this two months ago. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I was mid losing my shit. Give me a second, Squee, and what's up, Squee? I hope you're well. I was mid losing my shit over what was happening on the Discord server earlier today. And then as that was going down, I got called into the office, right? He, he doesn't respect my time to begin with. So when I go in, I sign in and I tell the front desk, call me. I'll be outside, I'll be in my car, I'll be elsewhere, I'll be doing other things. I've never I've never seen him on time. Minimum 45 minutes past the appointment time. Seen hour and a half before. So fuck him, right? I know I know how this works. I just fuck off. Sign in, here's my phone number, call me. Right? So I go out, I fucking do I'm talking to Kez, I'm fucking talking about nuclear power and shit and dealing with a bunch of idiots on her chat who don't understand shit for shit. And I'm fucking and then all of a sudden this shit starts happening on the server. Right, I got a, I got one fucking moron who's literally scanning Russian nuclear weapons because Murica bad, and then I got another fucking idiot that starts literally calling for the violent like down the violent downfall of the U.S. government. Oh yeah, sure that won't bring any extra attention. I'm sure that'll be just fine. Right, so this shit starts snapping off in fucking Discord. Now I gotta go inside and talk to the idiot doctor who doesn't listen to me for shit for shit anyway. And now, you know, I'm, I'm literally, hey, let's do your blood pressure. Hmm, this will be great. I didn't even look at the number. I don't even know. All I know is my blood pressure was much higher than it normally is, which, by the way, is probably normal for most people. My blood pressure tends to run low. But get into the fucking office with the doctor and start, like, you know, I want to I start moving some shit forward with um, getting the testosterone supplementation covered by insurance, so blah, 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 blah. And, of course, he starts fine. Well, why didn't you blah, 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 blah. It's like, oh, fuck you, doc. What? Fuck you. You don't listen to me anyway. I fucking said this two months ago, and you didn't say shit then. Now, all of a sudden, you're curious about it, and now you want to run your own fucking tests. I, oh, yeah, I just went off. I snapped at him. And, like, eventually, I calmed down a little bit, and he, he then... Then he did that shit that you know when you're you're sort of you took the you took the brow beating that you deserved, and he just sort of like you need to calm down. He said, "I I, I know I know I know it's you're it's okay." He was like, "I'm sorry, Mike." <sighs> He's like, "It's not good for you." He's like, "I I understand you're angry, like but yeah." You know, I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, I fucking am angry." I'm like, I'm angry at you, but I'm also angry at the community. I got a whole bunch of shit going on right now, and you're not helping me, Doc. You're not fucking helping. So yeah, he he's he he got on board. It it did it did the job. It ju it did the job. He's like, look, you know, I, 
I told him straight up though. I said, if you don't do this the way I want it done, if you won't give me the dosages that I want, I want, I said, I'll just do this on my own. I'm like, I don't care what you have to say. I don't care what the medical community has to say. If, if me thriving is in conflict with your medical principles, then I'll go with me thriving, not your medical principles. Just know that moving forward. So. All right. In some sense. Yeah, I went off on him, though. It, it did, Jammed. And thank you for the follow, Jammed. Um, yeah, I, I just, I had to snap at him. It's like, look, I between the idiots on Discord and then the idiot sitting next to me, I was literally doing the Discord shit, fucking typing up that, holy fuck, you fucking geniuses, I can't believe I need to type this message out. You can't make violent calls for revolution, you fucktards. Right? Like, I'm, and I've got him right next to me. And he's fucking doing this shit. And I'm just like back and forth. I'm like, fuck you people. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Plenty of fuck yous to go around. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, and now I'm still sweaty. Um, and fucking, I came home and I fucking took like a 20 minute bath just to try and some of it. I had, I had, I had some watermelon and I fucking took a quick bath and now I'm still sweaty and shit from it. <clears throat> Yeah, Bobby, for sure. <sighs> All right, Squee. What was your news, Squee? Prenatal snapping at doctors is one of my favorite activities. Um, I can tell you when you're shopping for a new primary, one of the best things to do is go in with a fucking notepad and take notes about everything shitty happening in the office and then go in and interview the doctor. Straight up, like, this is everything I've found wrong. Like, literally check for dust on surfaces and everything. This is everything I found wrong with your office while I was here. I was here for a new uh, primary, and this is what I found. And I don't think I'll be using you as a primary, but I thought I should bring these things to your attention, right? It's one of the most empowering moments you can have in your life. Kez, thank you for the raid. What's up, Kez people? I'm just fucking losing my shit on stream right now and decompressing a little bit. Hope you're all doing well. Um... <clears throat> Yep, Cassie, exactly. Um, I will forever survive on the petty gay energy you exude. <laughs> I got plenty of it, Cat. You got your medical card. Rock the fuck on, Squee. Now you're technically legal. Look at you. Uh, me toad, I could, but, you know, what's the point? Um, hey, Deirdre. Um, my, use my most used line is probably, want me to take a... <laughs> Jesus Christ, free Meryl. Want me to take a butcher's knife to my tit and slice a bit off so you can test it too? Jesus Christ. Um, well, you guys missed the... Um, nice, Squee. I wish I could. My fucking ankle is just fucked. I'm seeing a specialist on Monday. Monday, yeah. Um, I have one of the best podiatrists in this fucking country, straight up. I love their office too. Oh. Um, <sighs> Uh, Bobby, I think it's just, I think it's a high ankle sprain, which is like, what, 50% of um, the ankle sprains, and they're ridiculous to heal. I think it's a high ankle sprain. I don't know, but they're going to um, they're gonna get the orders for um, x-rays emailed over to me so we can get that done ahead of time because they're going to order MRIs anyway. And so we can just get that fucking knocked out of the way. Um, dude, that office is super efficient. I love them to death. Um... It's Fen. I, I will tell you, you came in late, Sven. We're implementing um, a sanctions and termination system. We're going to implement a hard rule set, and if you violate the rules um, and the process is complete, people will be terminated. And it's it's no longer arbitrary. It will be out of my hands. There will be a committee or a panel or people in charge of it or mods or somebody. I've yet to find out. We've yet to hash it out, but in the future. This won't even be my decision. We're gonna we're gonna formalize the process, and it will be what it is. And if you get removed from Discord, you get removed from Twitch. It is that simple. A removal from either element of the community is a full removal from the community. There you go. Get your shit together, man. Zippy, you can't. I don't think we're gonna do a nomination system. 
it seems it seems like it probably could be abused. Um, Deirdre, I'm way beyond deep breaths. Way beyond deep deep breaths today. Yeah, thank you though. Thank you guys. Oh, Squee, I don't smoke before stream. I don't smoke during, or at least I, the very tail end of stream, I'll smoke sometimes, but during stream or before stream, no. Um, it's bad for one, my performance, and two, I just decide not to stream. If I smoke before stream, I just don't stream. Um... Ah, Bobby, it is what it is. <laughs> Marcus, I would take you up on that offer. It's been a while since I had those. They're a good time. Um, Haunted Rev. Yeah, yeah, I feel you. Um... <laughs> Rev, streaming really is work. Yes. It really is. Maintaining, like, six separate conversations at the same time is, you know, balancing multiple pieces of technology and keeping, you know, the, the thread of your thoughts continuously going. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit of a juggling act, for sure. Um, but... Uh... Like I said, um, many of you weren't here for the beginning of the stream. It, it marks a new era. Um, it marks a new era in the community. Um, America deserved 9-11 because uh, we have gay people. America uh, deserved 9-11 because uh, we have gay people. That doesn't sound like Hassan is actually saying that, Jay Miles. That sounds like that is literally clipped out of context, and it sounds like Hassan is talking about some other people making that claim. Especially, yeah, I spreading that around is bad mojo to start with. Um, yeah, cat, like it, it's clear. As soon as you listen to it, you're like, well, that's out of context. Um, yeah, cupcake, of of course, yeah. Like, that sounds exactly right. Um, when you post that sort of thing, mention ahead of time. Like, hey, did you see Hassan making fun of the fucking right-wingers? Then post that clip. Otherwise, it seems like you're spreading, like, bad faith, like, out-of-context Hassan clips. Um... Anyway... Yeah, um, yeah. for those of you who weren't here at the beginning of the stream, it marks a new era of the, the community. We're going to have a sanctions system. We're, we're going to have removal processes formalized for the community because we need them, apparently. We've, we've passed the mark. It's overdue. It's overdue. Um, and that's, that's on me. That's on me for trying to run a big tent, for me being negligent, for caring about optics, for X, Y, and Z. The buck stops with me, right? I'm the community organizer. I'm the one who has administrative access, right? So I bear the brunt and the responsibility for those decisions at present. But moving forward, we're going to change that. We're going to democratize it. We're going to we're going to make sure that it follows some sort of anarchistic protocols. We're going to we're going to have, um, you know, firm rules posted and ready for everybody to be aware of that way moving forward there is no gray area there is no haziness and it is not an arbitrary decision um reliant upon me or the mods that infractions will be dealt with so it's just the way it's got to be so there you go uh, yep beastical it is it's a sign of growth Yeah, caboose for sure, for sure. Yeah, the the one of the many rules. Though you were an anarchist, it'll happen. It's guaranteed to happen. Um, cave. I 
Cave, you will fall. You will fall um, afoul of the no calls to violence rule. Probably, you need to keep an eye on that. TOS and no calls to violence. That's that tends to be where you cross the line. Um. Yeah, bringing danger or unwanted attention on the community is going to be one of the rules, or the p potential for saying things that would bring unwanted attention or endanger the community as a whole, as an entity, yeah, that will be one of the rules. We've already discussed it behind the scenes. So. Uh, Beastical, they do. Um, they're not usually accessible via iOS uh, because of Apple rules for whatever reason, or you have to like enable it on the account specifically or something. But they do, yes. Zippy, um, <coughs> operating in bad faith is already on the list. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah, Rev, you're fine. Um, uh, Bobby, um, just upload anywhere. Anywhere you can put those, just drop them, and I'll grab them from anywhere. Uh, if you need a site for that sort of large file upload, let me know, and I can direct you to one. As long as you can share out of it, I'll, I'll grab it from there. I'll grab it when stream's done. So I don't, um, don't fuck up any potential frame rate bandwidth bullshit. Um, uh, I remember when we had to implement the channel statement of praxis. This feels very similar. I, it's weird, these sort of moments for me, right? As an individual, but also as a community organizer is like the, the hub of this spoke of a wheel or whatever, however we wish to describe it. Um, yeah, Scora, I am. I'm a disappointed parent. I really am. I, I remember when I put rule, t rule zero down in Podbean. Rule zero. Most of you weren't even here for that. Only the OGs, the OGest of the OGs could remember. Meat Tray could remember that. Christina could remember that. I don't even think Cat would remember Rule Zero actually being a thing. Cat knows about Rule Zero, but I think Rule Zero. Yeah, Cat didn't even get to witness Rule Zero. I remember putting down Rule Zero. Don't make me make rules. It lasted maybe two months. And then Rick happened. And Rick became the first rule. Don't be a Rick. And then I remember the channel statement of Praxis that I, I almost named her. I almost named the person who, who basically is, the, is responsible for the channel statement of Praxis. Um, because remember, as Carlin pointed out, what did Rick do? Rick, Rick was a Rick. Um, remember as Carwin pointed out, rules always come after incident. Very rarely does the rule get put up preemptively. Usually what happens is somebody does something and then you're like, shit, we need a rule for that. Well, now we need a sanctions and terminations system.
Give me one sec. Swear to God. If one more person does something stupid in my world, I'm a snap. I'm a snap. Hey, Missy. Oh, this day is... This day is I, I, I doubt this day could get worse at this point, but it could. It could. Don't tempt... Don't tempt the... Um, hey, monster. Um, don't tempt the... Um, the fates. The universe is a cruel... Cruel bitch. Um... So... Uh, um... Yeah. Yeah. So, I went from rule zero, don't make me make rules, to literally having to formalize an agreement for the community and have some form of committee to handle this. Some sort of panel. Something. I don't know how we're going to handle that, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to be hands off with it. Um, just like I'm very hands-off with my mod team, or at least I try to be. I'm not going to be involved in it. I will I will be involved heavily in the crafting of the rule set and the implementation of the rule set. But as far as the, like, sanctioning process goes, I will stay completely hands-off. I will empower the mods or whoever on Discord and on Twitch to do what they have to do. Um, I'm not going to intervene on anybody's behalf. I'm not going to handle it myself. I'm going to turn that over to the community because I think that that is best. I think it's best that I don't have a hand in that. Um, oh, monster. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, monster. Yes. Yeah. Um... Zippy, I, I don't know. I don't know yet. I don't know how it's going to... I don't know how that's going to be handled. It may just be the mod staff, or it may be something, 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 something. I don't know. I'm sorry. Wither, you need to give me that link. Because if it says that, I'm going to fucking need to check who edited that. I, I just... I'm going to lose my shit if it actually says that, Wither. Who's posting all this crap? What, what the fuck is this shit? Jesus Christ, Wither. Um. <laughs> Zippy, we're not doing nominations. Okay. Yeah, we're uh, we're not doing nominations, Zippy. It doesn't say it's descended from. It's usually described alongside libertarian Marxism as the libertarian wing, libertarian socialism, the socialist movement, which is inaccurate. But I mean, at least it's not They're Contextually, they're saying as a historically left wing movement placed on the farthest left of the political spectrum described alongside libertarian Marxism. They're not saying it's descended from whether that's that's not what that says. Um. Oh. 
don't want the Algerian pirates to feel left out. Um, so does 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 um does anybody need me to talk about Afghanistan? Does anybody is anybody missing context at this point, or can I just skip it? Like we we did this, we did a fairly deep one on the Discord server yesterday. Um, I mean, I'll talk about it if somebody needs context, but otherwise. It's been a few days. Like, y'all should be caught up, right? I, I shouldn't have need to do Afghanistan at this point, right? Okay. Well, I don't know if Hassan's coverage is worth shit and whether that that man understands historical context for, for shit for shit. Because Kez brought some shit to me. Some fucking streamer was saying that Afghanistan in the 90s would have reminded you of the U.S., so, I don't fucking know what Hassan's running his mouth off about and whether he understands anything. So, just putting that out there. Um. Can we just skip the guy we all know? There's zero good faith in his sentences. See, I've never listened to Hassan. I don't know shit about him. <clears throat> Um, but yeah, so, all right, skip, um, uh, Rev, here's a hint, they weren't, um, So here's a here's here's a thing that I want to talk about. Caboose and I were talking about this last night. There's a few of us on voice chat last night, right? <clears throat> um, just a weird thing. Um. Dallas, the Dallas Police Department lost eight terabytes of um, criminal case data in a in a bungled data migration. Yeah, and the more I thought about this caboose, the more I'm I'm suspicious of this. All right, so they lost twenty two terabytes of data migration uh, they lost 22 terabytes of data in a data migration with this bespoke system they run it's called TechShare. it's a texas developed system or uh, for criminal justice for case management right they claim to have lost 22 they did the migration in april it was april uh, it was august 6th before anybody noticed that 22 terabytes worth of data had gone missing now once they noticed they managed to recover 14 terabytes of that data from backups within eight terabytes still missing here's my question how'd you lose the data in the first place it's a data migration you copy the data you don't actually move it. It goes from source A, you copy from source A to destination A. Right? You're not actually transferring the data. You're copying it and pasting it for all intents and purposes. It's not a physical transfer. And to boot, how on earth did no one, no one, no one notice that they were missing 22 terabytes of caseload data in three months for all intents and purposes? This sends huge red flags across the board. Monster, no, just systems. Uh, um, it, it, physical hardware, same system, same tech share system, 
So it's not like we were migrating data from MySQL to Maria or something like that, right? This is a bespoke system. As near as I can tell, it's a file system with a database attachment that ha utilizes a web-based GUI front end. The web-based GUI front end has the caseload data. The caseload data uh, references the file system location where the videos, images, and uh, any other ancillary files are attached to. All right, um, without getting my hands on the system, as near as I can tell. I don't know what database system they're using, but this is what I can tell from a distance, right? They didn't transfer systems. It wasn't going from Linux to Windows. They were just moving hard. Uh, they were moving data from hardware to hardware. How'd you lose it? So here's here's my yeah itty bitty. Um, here's my question. What they intend to lose? I'm sorry. I do not believe this is incompetence. I, I, I don't. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. I, I don't believe you. Right? Like, I've done... Hundreds, if not maybe four digits worth of data migrations in my career in IT, personally and professionally, right? I've done many. I've done terabyte data migrations, right? I've done multi-drive, NAS system, multi-server data migrations. I've done this stuff. I've done this professionally and I was paid well to do it. What do you intend to lose? because that's exactly what I would do. If I wanted to lose 100 cases, 1,000 cases, you ditch them all. Ditch them all. Bury it. They already had to release a, a suspected murderer. His trial was due to start last week. They didn't have any evidence. They, didn't, they lost all of the case files. All of it was gone. They just had to let him walk. I, I, yeah, no, no, Excel, I already talked about that. They lost eight. They originally lost 22. The data migration happened in April. I don't know if you were here for it, not, or if you just came late, Excel, but, or you weren't paying attention class. They lost 22 terabytes in total in the April uh, data migration. They didn't notice they had lost the data until August of this year. Depends how they did it, Zippy. Depends how they did it. If it were me, you're not getting it back. I don't know how incompetent they are or how overconfident they are. All I do know See, this is the thing. Yeah, it, it, this is this is the thing. I, I do not buy this whatsoever. This stinks to high heaven for me. As an IT guy, I'm sorry. You lost 22 terabytes of data in a data migration, and you managed to recover 14 terabytes in backups? I don't believe you. I do not believe them. So, there you go. Um, I'm on, I'm on so many score. Um, yeah, Bobby, there are ways to delete and then there are ways to delete NSA secure deletion standards. Yeah. 32 overwrites. Um, yep. Zippy, it would, it would be, it would be mens rea, right? <laughs> to, to fucking cat. It would be the guilty mind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're sp fucking completionist. We're doing a completionist run. Um, uh, cause I don't care. Like I literally don't care. I don't care. <laughs> I saw it. 
I saw it and I ignored it. Um, uh, Patronum. Now, um, basically, that's that's old physical media, um, old um, magneto optical drives. Thirty-two overwrites with random data um, was the NSA standard for years and years and years. It may have changed now, but yeah. Um, also, physical uh, physical destruction isn't a guarantee. Um, I've seen some amazing data recovery. I've seen a floppy go through a house fire and data get pulled off of it by clean labs, uh, by clean room, like high level labs. Yeah. They don't get all of it, but they get portions of it. Yeah. I, I've seen some amazing data recovery. Physical destruction isn't a guarantee. So, um, no, 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 not the full thing. Um, yeah, uh, so generally speaking, it's 32 overwrites with randomized data um, and then um, physical destruction if you really want to go to boot. Um, uh, Beasticle, um, they can. They can. Um, a high enough uh, magnetic loop. Yeah, a degaussing loop of a high enough uh, uh, quality uh, or high enough energy source. Yeah, it can do some damage. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, you'd be amazed what uh, some of the high-level data recovery firms can do. They're, they're actually terrifying. Um, I know OnTrack has some amazing stories uh, from their technicians over the years. Um, I know of one story with OnTrack technicians where they were picked up blindfolded and driven to a secure location at some government facility where they were given access and it was do your work here if you can do it you do it here um and then they were returned when the job was done yeah it's when you're an expert in data recovery you get into some very odd spaces it's um a highly specialized field that when it comes in demand you'd be surprised who who comes a knocking Oh, pretty metal. Um, oh, hang on. Um, <laughs> dude, I couldn't. That was, oh, God. Yeah, Excel. Fucking, that was the shittiest job. Um, a lot of basically, yeah, basically, um, physical overwrite, uh, it's physical, uh, digital overwrites and then thermite. If it's, if it's a drive, you put it in a bucket of thermite and you just ignite it. Yeah. Job done. Job done. Um, <laughs> Illusion, thank you for the follow. Your illusion, illusion. Um, Scorer, you'd be surprised what can happen. Um, laptop comes in from the field um, for field operations from Spec Ops, and it's been damaged in a firefight. There you go. Shit like that. Um, speaking of Texas, did you hear about the statewide alerts that went out overnight for the cop that got shot? He's fine, had a vest, got a bruise, but what's some rando in Dallas going to do about shooting in Houston? I did not hear about that, but um, it's not surprising. Yeah, you guys have those, like, blue alerts or whatever the fuck in, in Texas, right? I, yeah, we don't have those here. Um, cops are dumb as fuck, so they might have done an exit. The only question is if they're more, door, uh, more dumb than Shady. Um, it was a blue alert. Yeah, of course it was. Um, again, 
Uh, yes. If there's a shooting of a cop in Texas, what happens is like there's Amber Alerts for children and gray alerts for elderly. Well, there's a blue alert in Texas for a cop got injured be on the lookout. Yeah, it's a thing. <sighs> um well while we're while we're piling on just the shit um the the Europeans would know who this um who this is um yeah good luck with that you're gonna get on like great here um the Europeans will know who this is fucking rip Sean Locke it's a funny fuck he's he's not one of my favorite comedians or anything you guys know my taste in, com in comedians um, but Sean Locke died of cancer and I posted his bit if you're not familiar with the carrot in a box bit the, the, the carrot in a box is one of the most brilliant bits of just bluffing that you could ever witness. Um, but yeah, Sean died of, uh, of cancer. Yep. Um, Stan Hope is the greatest living comedian. Um, yes. Um, yep. Sean Locke did die. Uh, his PR, his press agent or somebody released a, a, an announcement earlier today saying he died of cancer. Um, so, yeah, sorry if I'm breaking the news to somebody, but yeah, rip Sean Locke. Um, let's see what else I got. I'm not even going to talk about that fucking headline. Jesus, goddamn Christ. Um... Yeah. Yeah, Black. He's, he's a good dude. He seemed like a good dude. Um, oof. <laughs> Marcus. <laughs> the PR agent broke the news by tweeting I'm un unemployed. Uh, nonsense. Sean Locke. He's a, a British comedian. He died of cancer. Um, so Moderna's mRNA HIV vaccine uh, trial starts today. It looks like the mRNA vaccine technology that got rushed due to the, uh, due to the pandemic may usher in a new era of viral treatments, herpes, HIV, HPV, we, yep. Oh. Uh. <clears throat> um, yeah. Oh, I remember. Uh, no, I don't remember you, but I, just based on what you fucking said one previous time you were in here, M9000, I, I know how to classify you. Don't don't think I'll be taking the bait. Um, anyway. Um. Oh, yeah. You want to do it? Hang on. Hang on. Let me pause the music just just for shits and giggles. We'll. Fuck the Chinese government there. And job done. Um, yes, it looks, it looks like we may, and the hope, the hope, okay, the hope is that they may actually work for people who already carry the infection. It may not clear it entirely. Like it won't be a, a, a proper cure but it would it might be enough to teach the body teach the immune system isn't that corrupt to keep the infection in check permanently to be able to do what hiv meds do and 
reduce it to undetectable levels in, in blood serum. That's the hope. We don't know yet, but if you can train the autoimmune system to actually seek out the virus and bypass its protective mechanisms. Yeah, it'd, it'd be a new era. Um, let's see, what do we got? What do we got? <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. I don't, there's no point in debating authoritarians. Um, y'all don't actually believe in anything ethical or tangible or philosophically sound, so... Um, oh, let's see. Um, yes, Bill Hicks. Oh, Bill. Everybody know I got Bill. Oh, again. Okay. Um, A lot of um mods. I I, I see the the chat. Um, I don't know if Angie's in here right now, but I, I see the the mod channel. <sighs> We're probably gonna have to have a few conversations. We're probably gonna have to have a few conversations. Um. Yeah, some people are gonna have to. It's gonna be a thing. It's gonna be a thing. Um. Anyway. Rev. There's entire sections. The, the server is not an open book. Um. All right. Basically. Basically. Um, okay, so... There's areas to the server. You Here's the cure... There's areas to the server that people don't get access to. For administrative reasons, for my sanity reasons, for security reasons, for... Some of you are brand fucking new and we don't know you reasons. So, yeah. That's how it works. Um... Oof. Yeah, that's rough. Um, okay, so... Yeah, basically, Bobby. Basically. Um... Uh, uh, Bezos is suing NASA. Uh, Amazon is suing NASA. Uh, because they don't like that NASA cut a deal with Musk for... With SpaceX, so they're suing them. Because they feel they should get the contract. It's a whole fucking deal. Um. <laughs> Karina, if you have to ask, uh, if you have to ask if there are secret channel, uh, if you have to ask why, uh, if there are secret channels, consider why you haven't seen them. Um. Oh, um. Nonsense. Well, it turned about fair play. Amazon sued the Pentagon over the Microsoft Azure deal because the Pentagon went, went with uh, the Azure platform um, from Microsoft. And so Amazon sued, Microsoft, uh, sued the government over that one. 
and that was called Project Jedi. No, I'm not joking. Um, and what the Pentagon did was they canceled the project, broke it up into like a few dozen sub projects, and then individually gave those small contracts over to Microsoft piece, uh, piecemeal, bypassing Amazon entirely. It, all it did was cost us, the taxpayer, more money. That's it. Administrative and bureaucratic overhead, judicial overhead. It just cost us more money. Yeah, that's literally all it did. It's okay, Angie. Take care of yourself, though. Um, school ridden, they don't. They don't. It's it's spurious lawsuits. It's just it's just a throw a wrench in the works usually. It's always like, well, these are public funds and we should have fair access to or competent blah, 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 blah. They didn't undergo the, the, the review process that it should blah, 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 blah. Honestly, usually they don't have a leg to stand on. Uh, nonsense. I already talked about it extensively. Um, I don't think it's a mishandling. I think it's a purposeful thing. Yeah. My professional opinion. My professional opinion is is that they didn't bungle it. They did it intentionally. Um... What if the public sues Amazon for being un-American? Is suing Pentagon sounds very un-American to me. Dude, that'd be that'd be a hilarious class action lawsuit. That'd be a hilarious class action lawsuit. Um So Florida, Texas, Mississippi, Arkansas. Um hang on, let me get give me my full fucking Um Kansas, Missouri, Arkansas, Oklahoma, uh, Florida, Georgia. Um, and Texas uh, are all basically underwater as far as COVID is concerned. Texas has um, Dallas specifically, I believe. Um, you know, Texas has requested five trailers, mortuary trailers, in anticipation of the overrun of deaths. Um, I know Louisiana was, was it Louisiana, was shipping people over to the next state. Florida is at present 23 of the tw uh, of the 50 worst counties in the US for covid hospitalizations are in Florida. So basically half of the most uh, hospitalizations occurring at the county level, all Florida. Um yeah. So it is it is snapping off again. Um but there is a pattern to where it is snapping off. For sure. Uh, five school departments in Texas are already closed after only a few days of school. Yep. Um, uh, Kentucky. Uh, there's a Kentucky school district that has already canceled classes as well. Um, let's see. 67, 6,770 uh, new case, statewide cases in three days with 25 related deaths in those three days. Um, and a that comes on the, the tail of a 12-year-old dying of COVID as well as a 16-year-old in South Carolina dying of COVID complications as, um, as the school district refuses to do anything. I think it's Lancaster. Uh, Lancaster. Um, no, it's Lancaster in South, uh, in South Carolina. It's Lancaster in, um, Pennsylvania. Uh, would we know if um, Lancaster County, South Carolina, uh, Lancaster County, uh, South Carolina. Um, yeah, they, they just had a 16 year old die from COVID infections. Um, they've got 21, uh, students, um, in infection in one school alone with 58 students in quarantine, 20 staff members confirmed 40 quarantining. Um, 
Okay, so Louisiana had 6,600 new cases um, yesterday. Um, yes, I saw that as well, Deirdre. Um, that was like last week or something like that. Yeah, Broward County, um, Florida, um, is losing teachers. Like, literally, they're dropping dead. Um, doc that works in Florida said they were having two plus deaths a night at the hospital he was at. Normally, it'd be two in a week. Jesus Christ. Um, I know Rev. Why is Glazy never here for any of the bad news about Florida? This is probably a, uh, you know, Zippy. I, I understand that sentiment. Let's just put it that way. Um, the virus will go away when it gets warmer. Yeah, that was a good take, wasn't it, Monster? Um, Paris, Texas is trying to circumvent no mask request. Oh yeah, 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 Crystal. I I saw that as well. That Gabbitt's, uh, that Abbott's um, mask mandate can be circumvented by just adding masks to the school uniforms. It's a simple workaround, but it apparently works legally. Um, yes, yeah, Marcus, uh, my, um, I, my grandparents, uh, paternal, lived in Pennsylvania. Um, I've, I've spent a fair amount of time in that part of the world. So yeah, it's Lancaster. I am unfamiliar. Um, Abbott is positive. Um, Abbott is also, um, a fucking typical piece of shit hypocrite who's been vaccinated. I think even with a booster shot, he's got like the triple, uh, triple vaccination and he's using, uh, embryonic stem cells. He's uh, he's using the monoclonal antibodies that uh, use the HEK HEK two ninety three cells, which used uh, embryonic stem cells uh, in the development of the treatment. Um, so the guy who is against stem cell therapies uh, and stem cell uh, stem cell research and therapies, and the guy who is against vaccinations, and the guy who is against masks, and the guy who is against closing down for uh, down for fucking COVID. Yes, that motherfucker. Yeah, he's got three vaccinations and is using embryonically st uh, embryonic uh, stem cell derived treatments for his COVID. Hmm, interesting. That's fascinating. <sighs> yep basically Aka. basically Aka. um <laughs> wither use a search engine you're a big boy. Use a search engine. Um, yep, rules for thee, not me. Uh, New Mexico's mandating indoor masks as of Friday. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, as of this Friday or past Friday? It doesn't matter. As long as they fucking do something. We have an emergency order in place, and we've had it for a few weeks um, in Nevada. Masks. Plain and simple. Um... So this is more a moment of the riches gains and the peasants ignorance. Yeah, basically, Karina. Oh, Bobby. Of course they are. Of course they are. I just. <sighs> um, Zippy, you're New Mexico. Is that what I'm on? Um... Wait, no, no, no. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, no. Um, night, Kaz. Sleep well. Um, yeah, okay. So, Zippy, um, New Mexico is a, a interesting case study in United States sort of geopolitical and population demographical uh, influence. New Mexico, New Mexico has the highest concentration per capita of PhDs in the country. They, they, they are per capita the most educated state. Um, thanks, guys. 
it, it's a really um, it's really fascinating um, byproduct of uh, let's just say some governmental programs. Los Alamos National Laboratories, Sandia National Laboratories. Um, yeah, it is a public. Thank you. Thank you kindly, public. Look at that. Jesus Christ, public. You've been a sub on this channel for a half a year already. Man. Um, yeah, basically it has to do with all of the governmental nuclear research programs <laughs> in New Mexico. It's, it's, a, it's a downstream byproduct of all of that research um, that New Mexico has the highest per capita rate of PhDs in the country. Ah, no worries. Um, drive safely, public. Yep. Yeah, they even have Dr. Gordon Freeman. Um... I just want to give a shout out to somebody. It's rare that a politician, I, right? Like I'm, I'm not gonna, we're, we're not gonna talk about the thing, right? I said, I said we'd skip over it, but there is one aspect of it that not many people are talking about. And I think it bears recognizing and it's a person, it's one person. Um, Congresswoman Barbara Lee out of California. She deserves a victory lap. She is the one person in all of the U.S. government, in all of Congress, that voted against the authorization for the Afghanistan war. She's the only one. Not Bernie Sanders. Not anybody else. It was Barbara Lee. She is the literal only one who voted against that authorization. And she caught mountains of shit for it. She, um, she caught, I mean, a decade worth of shit. The, the horrific, racist, McCarthyistic death threats like the amount of shit that woman took and if you go back and listen to her speech as to why she voted the way she did before the vote tally was revealed she thought she wasn't the only one she thought for sure there'd be somebody else she was certain that Though she'd be in the minority, that there would be other people voting their conscience. There'd at least be a few. You can tell by her language. You could tell by the, the word choices she makes in that speech. She, she's inclusive. She uses plurals. And then the vote count was revealed. And she was literally the only person. She got called the N-word by everybody. Honestly, like all of the right wing fucking pundits and shit. You should see some of the emails she got. She got called a traitor. She, the, the calls for her, her execution, like public execution, were real. She took mountains of shit for the better part of a decade. I want to see her do a victory lap. I want Barbara Lee to come out and fucking just literally do a victory lap around Congress. Just fucking carrying a flag. Just waving a flag that says, I fucking told you so. I fucking told you so on one side and then on the other should have listened. Just do a fucking lap. She's earned it. She's earned it. I'd love to see it. So shout out to Barbara Lee. Um, I only, she released, recently released a statement saying, I almost wish I had been wrong. Yeah, I get it. I get that sentiment. I can understand where she's coming from. Like, 
it'd be amazing if she were wrong, right? Like, in and out, they're a thriving democracy now. We eliminated the threat and everything is great, right? That yes, that would have been that would have been best. But that wasn't what was in the cards. And she knew that. And she voted her conscience. She's the only one to have done it, too, by the way. Not even Senator Bernie Sanders. No one. But Barbara Lee. So, shout out to Barbara. Congresswoman Lee, the one who the historical record will show was right. It took two decades, but she got the win. Ah, uh, let's see. <clears throat> hey, sourcing. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. <laughs> oh, that's, I mean, that's a good one. Um, so, guess whose hotel? Uh, guess whose hotels um, have imposed uh, mask mandates? Yeah, Trump. If you go to a Trump property, you're required to wear a mask. I just. I think about all the schmucks, all the fucking schmucks that buy that bullshit, that, that lick the boots of the oligarchs and the authoritarians, all the ones who bought the okie doke, believed the wink and the nod, thought they were on team. How do you not see this shit? He got the vaccine the same time he was telling you not to. Masks are masks don't work. Put your fucking mask on. Right? Like that sort of shit. Right? It is it's just I don't understand how I, I get it. Like I get it. Don't don't try and explain I, I understand the intellectual side of it. I understand the process. But emotionally, I don't get it. How do you not see this shit? <laughs> Jesus Christ, people. Um, yeah, oh yeah, Rev. Yeah, it's, it's just all of the signs are fucking right there for you. They're all right there the entire fucking time. Nothing. Nothing, just... What? It's astounding. Patrona, illiteracy, scientific illiteracy, but also illiteracy, so illiteracy, propaganda, school in the form of brainwashing, Prussian brainwashing, and there's your formula. It's really not that complicated. Don't give them the tools necessary for critical reasoning. Make an entire education of propagandizing them. And by the time they're adults, they won't know which way's up. You can tell them whatever the fuck you want to tell them. It's pretty simple, actually. It's terrifying. Um. Yeah, oh yeah, um. This is this is the perfect time. If you haven't read my tent poles essay, it's one of the best things I've ever written. Straight up. Go read my tent poles essay. Exclamation tent poles in chat if you if you need the link. Go read my tent poles essay. This is this is how you control a populace. It's real fucking simple. This is this is how the, the American populace is manipulated. Um so Yeah. Um Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. My sister's second grade teacher regularly read from the Bible in class. Fuck me.
uh, all of the all of those are subsets rev all of those are subsets once you understand the ba the tent poles that's why they're called tent poles once you understand the things that are holding it up everything else that falls under the tent there you go hey puka no it's been a weird day puka been a rough day i got most of the <clears throat> out at the beginning of the stream but it's been a it's been a day there's gonna be some changes in the community um shit's shit's moving and and i had to yell at a doctor i literally had to cuss a doctor out this afternoon um so yeah becca oh becca thank you for the follow by the way uh we have a baptist church sign reading bringing bring back prayer into schools again i'm in canada jesus goddamn christ I mean, I don't need to assemble an army of MILFs and femboys to rule the world. Fuck, there goes 10 years of organizing. Uh, well, I mean, primarily, you can still keep the army of MILFs and femboys. I'm sure they'll they'll prove useful for something else. Um, oh, look who washes in after we talked about fucking Florida. Everyone glazes here. Um, what is this with them and what is it with them in a prayer uh, prayer in school it's not even a legal uh, prayer in school oh fucking caboose it's a whole thing that army's makeup will look amazing this is sweet um We need more Roy. We need more Roy Moore to bring prayer back. Oh yeah, you know what? That's definitely what the uh, what the country needs, for sure. Um, here's a here's a terrifying thing. If you're familiar with this sort of thing, um. Long COVID and severe infections associated with Epstein-Barr reactivation. 73%, one study, one study found that 73% of their COVID-19 patients who were experiencing long COVID symptoms were also positive for an Epstein-Barr virus reactivation. Okay, so, okay, so, <laughs> I'm guessing Swede um, already is familiar with this for, for whatever reason. Um, so, 95% of you have Epstein-Barr virus. Just, just know this already. The majority of you, and by majority, I mean maybe 5%. Um, it, is, it is classified as a ubiquitous human virus, right? Um, oh yeah, Cr Crix, thank you. And it's why I grew a goatee originally in IT because when I was 18, I looked like I was 12. Um, so the majority of you have, uh, Epstein-Barr virus. Okay. Um, it is, it is classified as a ubiquitous, uh, uh virus in the population. Now, reactivation of an Epstein-Barr virus infection. Most of the time, your immunological uh, processes keep the Epstein-Barr uh, bar virus in check. It is a non-activated version, right? It just, it just sort of, yeah, like herpes, it's just ubiquitous, right? If it becomes reactivated, 
here are some of the symptoms that you can expect from Epstein-Barr virus reactivation. Fatigue, severe achiness, headache, sore throat, rash, uh, uh, lymphodemiopathy, so swollen lymph nodes, um, swollen uh, spleen, swollen liver, liver dysfunction, abnormally low blood platelet counts. Um, It basically is chronic fatigue syndrome. Um, <laughs> um, infectious mononucleosis is mono. Um, uh, uh, who asked that? Um, Kaiser. Kaiser. Um, yeah, it's Epstein Barr virus is the most common cause of infectious mononucleosis, but it's not the only cause. So it's the most prevalent cause. Um, but yes, so one study and here I'll, if you want, um, there you go. Um, yeah, they found, uh, they found 73% of their long COVID patients had an EBV reactivation. So, hey shorties. So it's, we're, we're dealing with not only the neurological and pulmonary and vascular damage that is potentiated by a COVID cytokine res- a cytokine response, um, cytokine response. Um, but now you're looking at potential EBV reactivation syndromes as well. <laughs> nice, Marcus. We are, this is, between the neurological findings of the one study um, that, I mean, they served 81,000 people. Um, It was anything but a small study that that showed the uh, mental degradation that COVID infections uh, were correlated to. And now seeing that, you know, study admittedly, I think 185 was the N on the study. Um, seventy-three percent of them had an EBV uh, reactivation. Dude, we're it, it's this is a whole fucking thing, y'all. This is a whole fucking thing. Um, yeah, basically, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Um, I mean, I don't know if anybody knows, but yeah, pure speculation at this point. Yeah, will it compound the effects potentially? Yeah, it could be it could be the potentiation for it, or it could um, could compound the effects. We don't know yet, but that's not a um, happy result of a study for sure. I, I just you know. I had like one good headline for you today. The, the you know, the mRNA uh, HIV vaccine trial starting. Like that's, that's, dude, that, that was your glimmer of light. That's all I got for you. That's your, that's your fucking glimmer of light. I, I, I can't really help you with anything else. It's all shit otherwise. Um, Hey, Scattered. Thank you for the follow. Um, <laughs> yep, <laughs> Kaiser, we're all sold out of hope, folks. Sorry. Um, all going downhill from here. I mean, we've been through greater genetic filters and greater genetic bottlenecks than this before. But, you know... Get your vaccines, stay current on your vaccines, get the boosters if they're recommended for you, wear your fucking masks, and wash your goddamn hands. 
beyond that, life is going to have to chug on because the economic and governmental systems that we have in place are not prepared for this. As Swede would be a fan of saying, we need a new ism, but the new ism isn't here yet, folks. It's out there somewhere. It's it's operating in the wild right now as we speak. Somebody's doing the new ism, but it's not here yet, and we're not ready for it. So in the meantime, we get neoliberal capitalism and oligarchism in the U.S. Um, by and large, oligarchism across the world for the most part. Um the vast majority of humanity is being ruled by oligarchs. So. Um, gamerism. Beastical, it does. Yes, it does. Um, COVID has already been widely responsible for the reactivation of the dumb asshole vector. For sure. Uh, Fields, uh, JB, thank you for the follows, uh, follow. Um, whether, um, I mean, it's arguable that a couple of the Nordic countries maybe, um, but the truth of the matter is, is the rich and powerful run shit. There's, there is an argument to be made that humanity has n very rarely been anything but oligarchism for at least most of recorded history, at least. Um, Yeah. I mean, there, there's a, there is ground to stand on that the rich and powerful or the rich are the powerful, right? The ones with access to the resources, the powerful, the elites, they've always run stuff. It doesn't matter what system that was put into place, whether it was, you know, a Roman Senate or whether it was a, um, uh, fucking German Bundestag or whatever the fuck the name is for that place. I think it's Bundestag. Um, I could be butchering that, um, or a U.S. Congress or a House of Parliament in Canada. These countries are all ruled by the rich and powerful. So, hey Gemma, sorry you're having a you're having a day. You're having a day. I'm having a day too, Gemma. It seems it's going around, Gemma. It's going around. Today, it, <laughs> I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm going to get a little woo-woo on you. I don't actually believe this. Calm down. But, like, the energy field is in flux today, Gemma, and it's affecting many of us. Let's just, you know, chalk it up to that. That or, you know, that or the care package from Hermes didn't get delivered to mankind. Take your fucking pick. Either way, it seems like it's a shit day for a lot of people today. Um, even perfectly pronounced. Bundestag. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I was, I was kind of, kind of sure. <laughs> I was, I was kind of, but yeah. Um. Oh, nonsense, then the wave is coming. Beware. Uh, Mercury's probably doing something. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, interesting. Primero. Fun fact, one of the most common insults in Argentina, gar Garza? Garza? Uh, Garza. Uh, is... Wait. Ave se, se, se. Yeah, se. Uh, Garza. Um, is both a verse, uh, slang word created uh, by inverting the syllables of a pre-existing word of, oh geez, uh, the G in Spanish always kills me. Caga, caga, uh, caga? I, I, I'm sorry, I'm killing it here. Um, to shit. Uh, but wordplay on uh, oligarca, uh, oligarca. Uh, Jesus Christ. My, my tongue is not doing the Spanish pronunciation today, primarily. Like, my brain is not doing the Spanish today. Um, that was brutal. I just, I just fucking gringoed the shit out of that. I know. Yeah, words go. <laughs> if I never see that country name again, I will be happy. <clears throat> um. For the moment, yeah. Glazy, yes. I may have to come out of retirement, but yeah. 
Um, hey, Glazy, 23 of the uh, 50 worst counties for COVID hospitalizations are all in Florida right now. Um, also, you guys are having teachers drop dead because of COVID now because you reopened your schools without fucking protections. How's that uh, Floridian Empire coming, by the way? Just FYI. Just curious. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, and just FYI, the 50th worst county in the U.S., which also is a Florida, Floridian county, has a higher rate of hospitalizations now than the worst county three weeks ago. It's getting by an order of magnitude worse. Hey, Squid. Ah, uh, sweet. Yeah, I, I kind of gathered that. The, the curse of immortality. Is there hope for me potentially moving to Florida? <laughs> um, yes. Yes, monster. It's, oh, it's fine. It's fine. Don't, don't. Don't mind that fire. That fire's fine. Pay no attention to that. Um, you guys are gonna have a fucking labor glut, uh, a, a labor deficit. You're gonna need to pe uh, need to have people moving to Florida here in a minute, Glazy. Between your elderly that constantly need taking care of, and the fact that you are shedding people. You're going to need to import labor soon. Mm, no. Not even in the least. Um, I would like the state back, though. Like, geographically... Well, hurricane, climate change... Yeah, you know what? You can keep it. Honestly. The, the only benefit is it's... it's, it's um, Marcus, thank you for the... Um, <laughs> I, my sub didn't re-up for some reason. I blame the Illuminati. I do too, Marcus. Um, the only reason I would want Florida back is because of its adjacency to the Caribbean, which I'm a big fan of. Um, it would be nice to have the Keys separated from Florida, though. Like, if we could make them their own thing. That'd be great. Um... This is one way to make them go pro immigrant real damn quick. Um, Conk Republic. There you go. Yes, Akka. Um, um, my friend has assigned 16 special ed kids to a 10 by 20 room. She has to keep teaching even if a kid goes home positive. The one window has to be covered with a whiteboard for lack of space. Jesus Christ, some sense. Jesus fucking Christ. <clears throat> you can get to the Caribbean from here easily. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 an easier boat hop, though. Like, from the Keys on down, uh, Cassidy. But I know, I know. Like, Texas, the entire Gulf has access to it. Um. Hey, no worries, Jammed. Um. Do what you got to do. And thanks for coming through. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for the follow. And yeah, I'm on um, I'm on five days a week. Usually I took two days off this week. I randomly take days off whether I'm not feeling if I'm not feeling it, whether I'm injured, something like that. Right. But plenty of time to stop on by. Um. Oh, we got a new rig coming jammed. That'll be fun. Uh, enjoy that. Um. All the cruises leave, uh, re <laughs> cruises leave from NOLA, too. Not that I'd get on a cruise anytime soon. Um, yeah, that's definitely not a thing. I One, I, I don't like cruises. I don't like cruises. The The concept is terrible. It's To me, personally, the idea of a cruise is basically a nightmare vacation. The, the entire concept across the board, for me, is just shit. There's no aspect of it I like. 
Um, but, you know, like, I understand some people enjoy them, but it, it, in this current climate, if you were to get on a cruise, let's just say I would think very little of you. <laughs> My opinion of you would drop into the fucking toilet if you got on a cruise ship right now. Um, but what you don't want to catch legionnaires? Um, yeah, beasticle for sure. Charter a boat, yeah, that'd be that'd be great. Uh, fucking hate cruises, being stuck on the boat, sourcing same hundred <clears throat> percent. Premarital, a repeat after me, kids. Away down south in the land of traders, COVID snakes and alligators. Um. Glazy, y'all can't even take over fucking your own state. Your own state is sinking. Your own state got taken over by, like, Jewish retirees from New York. Your state's a fucking joke, man. Literally on an international scale. It's sad. It's sad. It's sad. <laughs> it's sad. Florida is an international joke. I can go to fucking Austria and they know about Florida man shit. Right? Like this is this is sad, man. Is this some like degree of overcompensation for how shit your state is that you're like, yeah, Florida, woo, fucking Floridian Empire. It's a joke. Like it's it's literally a global joke. I couldn't I couldn't even imagine trying to defend that shithole. It's it's just an alligator covered meth lab with retirees yelling about NIMBY shit all the time. <clears throat> it's my idea of a nightmare state. Germany knows about Florida man. Yeah, like every <sighs> Your state is gonna be auctioned off to Aquaman. <laughs> Jesus Christ, sweet. Uh I enjoy cruises in Disney World. Hangs head in shame. I understand what I'm supporting when I pay them. I'm trying to cut back. Patronum, I'm better with the Disney World than I am the the cruise. I get that I get the Disney hate, but Disney World is a fucking spectacle and a half. I understand the Disney World thing at least. I've been there. I understand it. Like Disney World is the definition of like a DeBoer spectacle, right? I understand it. I get that. It's the cruise thing that I judge you for. Um Puka, um I want to get I want to get the fuck away from people. Cruise ships would be the complete opposite of that. I get that Puka for sure. Yeah. Like trapped on a fucking ship with like a couple of thousand people and legionnaires disease. <laughs> um I have the, I heard they have roaming bands of old people in Florida. Yeah, they drive their golf carts and shit, and they just like come up to your house and they they use HOA rules to like make your life a, a, a fucking living hell. Yeah. Um. Hey Joe. Hey sidewalk. Um. Florida is a meme. Uh, yes, Aka, I know all about Celebration Florida. Celebration Florida was um, the follow-up to what uh, good old Walt intended Epcot to be. If, for those of you who don't know, Epcot is an acronym. It stands for Experimental Prototype Community of Tomorrow. The original Epcot was actually supposed to be occupied by people. People were supposed to live in Epcot. It was supposed to be an actual thriving planned community that was run by a dictator, Walt Disney. It was supposed to be truly an authoritarian dictatorship. His word goes, and you, ag you agree to abide by the rules set forth by him and the Disney Corporation when you became a resident of it. The original plans for Epcot are intense. They're insane. Um, there's videos on it. Various people have done documentaries on it over the years. And Celebration Florida is the continuation of that dream of Waltz of a planned Disney community. Yeah. Um, 
Rev, what does this cruise in Disney World you speak of? Um, Marcus, I have friends in the UK, India, Norway, Dubai, and Brazil who all know about Florida. Yeah, it's, it's a fucking global meme at this point. Yeah, at least I can walk out of Disney World. Exactly, Kaiser. You can leave when you want. It's difficult, but you can leave. Uh, Vegas has been one of the only times I've been in awe of human construction beside Disney. I think Disney World's construction is more awe-inspiring than Vegas, um, but I hate Vegas, so I may be biased in my decision. But I understand. Yeah, no, we have some construction here, especially when you get in the buildings and you start like walking from one side to the other and you're like, Jesus Christ, this place is fucking massive. It really is. Um, it's an impressive... We impressive feats like indoor rivers and fucking entire towns and shit inside. It's ridiculous. Vegas is fucking weird as shit. So I get that, Patrona. Um, public cruises equal. Let's hang out in a hotel. We can't leave. Yeah, basically. Um, <laughs> Florida is like a Mad Max. Is like Mad Max with an all seventy-five plus cast. Oh God, talk about a nightmare. Um, I do know Reno nine one one, Joe. Puka, here's an interesting thing. There's not a ton of evidence showing that Walt was an actual anti-Semite. He was a misogynist, for sure. He, he didn't have a great opinion of women. But I went looking, because we all know this thing about how Walt hated the Jews, right? It's just sort of like a cultural touchstone at this point. And I went looking, and there's not actually a ton of evidence indicating that. There's very mixed reporting and it's it's always bothered me that it's sort of this cultural normative like it's just a mythos of our society that walt disney was anti-semitic but when you actually go looking there's not a ton that that's built upon and so it just yeah that's always been one of those things i, I mentioned when people mention it. it's like you might want to look into that like actually go looking into it and see what those rumors are founded upon. It gets it gets weird. It gets weird. You're like, is this it? Like this is this is the Walt hates the Jews. This is what we're basing this on. He hated women. He uh, he didn't hate women. He just didn't think women were capable of anything. Women have their place and their role, and it's not where the men are. Right? He was definitely old school misogynistic. Um, but the Jew thing, yeah, it's, it's, it's tenuous at best. Viva, thank you for the Daddy Bezos bucks. Um, seven months, look at that, Viva. Um, should clip the next five seconds for when her Joe comes in. Hey, Joe. And that is all I will play of that, Jesus Christ. Um, I would have moved that timestamp a little forward to that. <laughs> um, so the usual rich dude stuff. Yeah, basically. Um, Epcot sounded awesome, except for the dictatorship. Patronum, if Epcot could have been ruled, like, anarchistically, if it could have been organized anarchistically rather than, like, Walt's iron fist, actually, it was a really fucking cool idea. Epcot was a really fucking cool idea. He had some really interesting ideas for it as a community. Um, it was just my word or the highway sort of situation going on with him and... Jeez, Viva. Um, now I wonder if people in North Korea know about Florida. Oh, God, that'd be hilarious if even the North Koreans know about how, like, Florida man shit. Um, that'd be fucking brilliant. So not getting up to Wagner levels? No, Joe. No. Um... In public. I've heard that as well, so I'll just stick to calling him a generic racist, no longer name brand. Um, fair enough. Yeah, okay, yeah. And caught up on chat. There we go. Um, yeah, it's, it's really it's really weird that there's some like weird Mandela effect shit going on and like just general popular mythos surrounding um, Walt Disney and hating the Jews. It's it's not a ton there. 
Um, but yeah, his 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 opinion of women was definitely um, of the time. Let's just put it that way. It was it was contemporarily appropriate for his era. Stay in the kitchen, sweetheart. It's basically his opinion of women. Secretaries, kitchen, housemaker, that sort of thing. Subservient to men, not in creative roles, not in any sort of authoritative capacity or administrative capacity. Yeah. Um, so standard 50s era misogyny. Uh, possible? Don't have it. Um, if you want to send biddies, you can send biddies, but I don't do it otherwise. Um, thank you, though. Just, just the sentiment alone. Thank you. <laughs> Be my servant until I decide to wife you. Um, yeah, Swede. I, I, Honestly, yeah, like, I, the, even the, the, the racist thing is pretty fucking flimsy. I, I, the only thing I've ever found, like, real fucking meat on the bone for Walt is his of-the-era misogyny. That, well-documented. That, that's well-documented. <laughs> Stay in the kitchen, sweetheart. He didn't believe women could could draw or they could be animators or they could be creative writers. He felt that women, you know, belong in subservient roles. Um, that, there's, there's literal signed evidence for that. As far as his misogyny goes, he wrote letters telling women to basically, like, we don't hire female animators. Right? Like, he's straight up signed that shit so the misogyny stuff send him up the river for but the rest of it yeah it's it's tenuous at best um oh geez all right hmm uh, let's see. So we talked about that. We talked about that. Um, no. Um, I mean, Walt was a propagandist. He was willing, he was a propagandist for hire. Uh, Walata, for sure. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, Walt Disney's prop, like the Disney Studios, was saved by their propaganda. They were like on the verge of bankruptcy going into World War II. And if I recall, the. Um, the propaganda films they did following the um, attack on Pearl Harbor basically brought them into solvency so yeah they they hey let me because they got paid they got paid okay so oh i need an inflation calculator I need to know what these numbers are actually. Um, okay, so Walt Disney got paid in today's money $83,572 for each of the shorts they did for the uh, for the US military. He was contracted to do 20 of them um so 
he got paid $1.67 million to produce U.S. propaganda just in 1941. Um, yeah, they, they literally brought him out of solvency. Uh, they uh, Sorry, uh, insolvency. They brought him into solvency, brought him out of insolvency. Um, so, yeah. Sounds about right. Um, okay, that was Akka. Yeah. Um, and what does Rev have for me? Dr. Seuss on malaria. Um, oh, God. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, a little bit of... Um, Hey, Zippy. Yeah, a little bit of propaganda for the military as well from Seuss. It was it was pretty common during the time. I mean, um, I'm having a complete brain fart. Um, Daffy Duck, right? Um. Um, Daffy Duck has a mili U.S. military service record. I'm not kidding you. This is real. Like, this is real. Daffy Duck has an actual U.S. military jacket. Um, it's, it's one of the weirdest fucking stories. So, Huey, Dewey, and Louie, so everybody knows, like, uh, DuckTales and Scrooge McDuck and that sort of shit, right? Huey, Dewey, and Louie go to live with their uncle Scrooge, Scrooge McDuck, who's got the fucking piles of gold he swims through. Do you know why they went to go live with Scrooge McDuck? It's because their uncle, who is who had custody of them, went to serve in the war. This is this is this is actual lore. And um Daffy fucking uh literally has a US Navy file due to the propaganda efforts that uh, Warner Brothers um, engaged in. It's it's some of this crazy fucking shit born of that era that you're like, <sighs> yeah. Um, if the government hired me to do propaganda, I'd bring back Thundercats. Thunder, Thunder, Thundercat. Um, heard Captain Crunch was guilty of uh, stolen valor. Um, see if I can. Um, there you go. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Donald. Donald, not Death. Fucking Donald. Sorry, Donald. Um. Sorry, my, my I've had a, a fucking day. Yeah, it's Donald. Sorry, not Daffy. Fucking Donald. Donald has the nephews. Um, Donald Duck was a soldier in World War II who tried to become a pilot, who, but was tricked into becoming a paratrooper by a sergeant who didn't like, like him. He was decorated for serving behind enemy lines in commando missions and destroying a Japanese base single-handedly. In 1987, he returned as a sailor in the Navy. But in that, uh, during that reenlistment is when he gave up his three nephews to serve. This is actual fucking cartoon lore. Like, this is, this is real. And due to the actual propaganda efforts that the studios, that entail the studios, there are actual military jacket files on these characters. Shit gets weird in this world when you start talking about U.S. government propaganda and stuff like this. Um, 
Oh, I just got to fucking the section in chat fucking actually fixing me. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um. But, you know. Yeah. Just, everybody has a fucking duck. Everybody's got a fucking dog. Keeping them tr straight is whatever. Scooby-Doo for life. Um, reason he had custody is because his twin sister is an astronaut. Della. Welcome to the world of propaganda and cartoons. It's so weird. And y'all motherfuckers need to learn to tag. Um, Pentagon once refused to provide Marvel with funding for their films because Marvel wouldn't tell them where the Pentagon uh, fell in the hierarchy with S.H.I.E.L.D. This sounds about right. Sounds about right. Okay. Um, Scrappy doesn't exist. I don't know who you... What are you, what are you talking about, Axel? Who's this? What's Scrappy? I say we avatar that shit. Well, M. Night Shyamalan avatar it. I don't... Who's Scrappy? Um, I still want to see the R-rated cut of the Scooby-Doo movie with, like, Freddie Prince and shit like that. There's an R-rated cut. It exists. Um, Daphne is... is uh, Daphne and Velma are explicitly lesbians in that cut. And they fucking, like... Uh, I've heard rumors that they, like, made out in that cut. Oh, yes. Yeah, there's a fucking R-rated cut of that movie, Rev. Like, it was originally shot for adults, not for kids. There's explicit cannabis jokes. There's explicit lesbian uh, shit between Daphne and Velma. There's a whole bunch of swearing. Yeah, it's it's been rumored to exist for years. And there there are people... I've, I've literally spoken to one person on Reddit who ancillarily worked in film industry and said oh yeah yeah, no the the screener went out for it and so certain people got to see it and then it was decided cut it we're changing the rating we're going to change what we're going for on the rating cut a whole bunch of this shit so the explicitly uh lesbian relationship between velma and daphne got fucking trash canned the explicitly uh, the explicit pot smoking by uh by shaggy and scooby that hit the fucking cutting room floor. Whole bunch of a whole bunch of the swearing gone as well. Yeah, dude, that that Freddie Prince fucking Matthew Lillard um, Scooby Doo movie. There was there's a more adult version of it. Maybe if they've deleted the footage, if it's been destroyed, who the fuck knows? But as it was originally shot, yeah, for years and years and years, people have talked about that, that it was originally shot for a more adult audience and they trimmed it down to where it did, what it became. Um, No, Rev, it, it didn't even make it out of the studio. Yeah, it doesn't exist online. It did it doesn't ex it may not exist at all now because it didn't make it out of the studio. Yeah. Yeah, scrap scrappy doesn't exist. I don't I don't I don't care. Scrappy doesn't exist. Fuck scrappy. Um they even acknowledge that. Um in the movie because they make Scrappy the villain. Nobody wants Scrappy to exist. Scrappy is the it's just is one of the biggest mistakes, period. And they so in the movie they even they're like, yeah, we're, we're gonna have Scrappy be the villain so we can kill Scrappy. <laughs> Although they don't kill him. Though I'd imagine the original cut. Probably. Um Oh, Jay. Yeah, for sure. Uh, oh, shit. I'm being tagged. Give me a second. Um... Oh, which one's that for? 
I mean, Jay, just just behind the scenes talk, Jay, um, I, I feel you on the, the safe space thing, but honestly, I don't think we're going to fall into that trap. It's just, it's Kat said earlier in the stream, you probably weren't here for it. There is such a thing as too big a tent. The tent may have gotten too big. So we need to do some stuff about it. Um, who's is, Exol gets it. Who's Scrappy do? I have no idea who that is. <clears throat> uh, Walata, then don't worry about it. You don't need to know. Um, <sighs> yeah, no, fuck it. He doesn't exist. I, I don't, I don't. Um, isn't it a shame that they never made sequels to The Matrix? Akka gets it. I know, right? It seems like that movie had such potential, Akka. I don't know why they never made, like, a follow-up to it. Huh. I mean, yeah, that's weird. Don't know what happened there. Um... <laughs> Dude, that was a fucking. I did. I never watched Dragon Ball, and even I, like, I watched that. I was like, my outsider in knowledge, right? Like, I don't know shit about this anime. I'm like, I can pick out mistakes here. Like, this, this is just wrong, right? Like, just, just from what I've seen of clips and memes and shit, I'm like, this is, like, wholeheartedly wrong. Wow. Like, I can only imagine what, like, an actual fan of that series thought. Like, just Jesus goddamn Christ. Um, I did see the uh, Fist of the North Star live action. Oh, that was... That was a thing. That was a thing. Um, Ak, I was living in Japan when that came out. It was so embarrassing. Oh, I can imagine. Um... Jay, no, no, I didn't jerk. I really didn't. I really didn't. I thought I was just gonna be some dude yelling into the void, Jay. I really did. And now, like, after we're coming up on a year of Twitch, we're starting to hover in the partner territory. Like, we're just in politics, and we're hovering in the partner territory. If I regularly switch this over to just chatting, we could bump those numbers up. Yeah, no, I never thought it would get this far, Jay. For those of you who don't know, Jay is one of the OGs of the OGs. Jay has a special place in my heart. Um, and so, yeah, like, Jay, Jay knows. Um, Jay was there for the origins. Um, and has gone back... Jay has gone back to episode zero. And listened all the way forward. From the podcasts forward. Jay knows me. Um, yeah, Jay... I, Never thought. I, I never fucking thought. Not for a moment. Uh, Jay would have been there for Rick as well. Yes, Jay knows. Jay knows. Ex Jay knows very well what Rick was up to. Ah. Uh. Um. Excellent it would. If I believed that those were spaces where education could be engendered, to somebody could actually garner something from them. I do not believe, though, that those spaces are um, where coherent, cohesive arguments are made. I think that those spaces are performative. And as such, I don't think they're appropriate spaces for praxis. This is this is my judgment. 
This is my critique. Um, you know. Debates are great. Debates. Can we just, can we just debates? Um, Joe, we are. Um, if you, if you want to know Joe, we're actually, this is episode 331 of Proudly Radical. Yep. Um, and there are projects, there's, there's a project before Proudly Radical. You guys know Proudly Radical, but the OGs might be aware of what came before. Jay would be. Um, close but no cigar, Joe. Close but no cigar. Oh, Jay even fucking fucked it up. Look at that, both of you. Both of you fucked it up. Likes. Misery likes company. Because I don't necessarily love company. <laughs> I like it though. Um, yeah, and yeah, if you guys were curious, like all of my VODs go up on YouTube. <laughs> um, there is there is a probably radical YouTube channel that has all of like not all all. There are some exceptions, but yeah, they're for the most part they're there. Um, if you want the old podcast episodes, you go to my website. They're there. Um, my work is archived. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't publish the YouTube stuff. Like I don't really like, I think there's like 51 subscribers on the YouTube channel or something like that. It's not even enough to get a custom URL. Um, it's not something that, you know, I make a huge use of. I don't do clips. I don't do edited versions. I hate video editing. So, this is what it is. Um, who was I talking to, though? It was Exol, right? Uh, Exol, I understand your point, and on average, what you're saying is true, but I think uh, even some of your ideas would still manage to spread through these debates. Um, I love that you put it in air quotes though, for it for me, Exol. Um, I have I have stated numerous times that. If somebody wants me on a panel, if somebody wants me in a conversation, then you guys are feel f you guys are free to advocate for me to be in that space. You, um, but I will not reach out to these people. I will not be cold calling any of these debate panels. I will not be putting my foot forward and saying, "I want to be on this panel. I want to talk about this." If somebody is like, hey, you should get Kai, I want to hear, you know, that sort of thing, and they reach out to me, I'm open to it. But I will not, I, I will not um, pursue it. That, that just is my general policy. So, feel free. Like I said, I, I give you guys full capability. Like, you have my blessing. If you, if you want me in some other spaces... And you want to advocate for me to be there? By all means, I, I don't mind you doing that. Please don't be obnoxious little cunts about it. Um, you know, but otherwise, yeah, I don't I don't mind that. Um, what do I got here? Uh, what kind of, <laughs> uh, I'm an anarchist, plain and simple. Um, Professor Kingzilla 031108. Oh, I missed the underscore. I'm sorry. Professor Kingzilla underscore 031108. Um, I'm an anarchist, plain and simple. I advocate for uh, anarchism as an organizational modality and a lens of analysis. Now, as to what you do with that, uh, those tools after I educate you and give those tools to you, that's up to you. As an anarchist, you should have no project of projects. Now, you as an ANCOM, you are just a communist who is organizing things anarchistically, right? And this isn't me running a purity test. This isn't me saying you're lesser than 
or you know uh you know an inferior version of it's just me making the linguistic and political science uh, science definitional difference between what an anarchist is and say an anso ancom and sin these sorts of things right so you have an agenda outside of anarchism I personally will advocate for various things like anarcho-syndicalism because I see it as a step in the right direction and I think it's an achievable step within the system that we currently occupy and, and these sorts of things. But if we were talking, you know, is setting up a commune in fucking Costa Rica, I might talk about, you know, yes, what's organizing anarchistically, but also you may want to use some, you know, communistic principles. You want to may, maybe use some communitarian principles. Maybe there's some elements of like Gorzian socialism that you want to involve as well. Maybe there's, you know, uh, there's elements from other systems that you may want to bring in, right? But I myself am an anarchist. First, foremost, and primary, right? This is what I concern myself with, is the elements, history, modalities of, and lens of analysis that is anarchism. After that, do what you will with them. Um, well, that's a giant question. Oh. What are your political views on? I mean, that's, that's a giant question. You want to narrow the scope of that for me a little bit? Um, yeah, I, I don't, yeah, I haven't watched Bo Burnham's latest special. Um, I haven't watched Bo Burnham since um, a long time. Let's just put it that way. Favorite political author or thinker? Um, do you want somebody who wrote theory or somebody who documented theory? Because, um, Peter Marshall isn't an anarchist, but has documented his historical um, historical context and instances of anarchistic mill views and philosophy and theory throughout, you know, on a global stage. And so, I mean, he would qualify, even though traditionally he, you know, he isn't a theorist, right? Um, Emma Goldman, we disagree, but I adore her. Um, but she's not necessarily my favorite author. Um, my favorite author... Oh God, you know what? Let's go with Michel Luc Bellomer. Um, he's in his writing is impenetrable. It's academic to the, the like it's academic writing cubed. It is horrific. It is not for first timers. It is not entry level. Um, it is dense and opaque as uh, as theory text can get. It's obtuse in places, but. It did a lot for um, it did a lot for the sort of formative um, theory building for me. Sort of when I sort of migrated from okay, these are sort of anarchist theories, and this is how you construct anarchist theory. And so it is very formative in my experience as an anarchist reading Bellamare as to how one goes from taking other people's theories to constructing your own. And so, yeah, if I had to, if I had to single somebody out and he's still alive, he's a contemporary, you can reach out to him. He's, he's got his DMs closed, but he's got Twitter, right? Like you can, you can talk to him. He's a professor. Um, and you know, yeah, Michelle Luc Bellamare probably would be my go-to answer for that one. Um, Hey sailor, I'm struggling tonight. Keep me coming. Sailor, we got your back. We got your fucking back. We'll keep you company. Um, Uh, Gemma, you can't get to communism with uh, through communism. It's I, I, I will I will have this out with you sometime if you you'd like, Gemma. You can't achieve communism through communism. You have to achieve it through anarchism. I've I've argued with communists over this point for years now, um, but there's other people. You're welcome, W. Um, there's other people fucking you, Gemma and I, you, Gemma, you and I have plenty of time, future time together. We could fucking hash that out nine ways to Sunday. And I'm sure we will. Um, 
Fucking Emma. I love her. I love Emma to death. I love Emma to death. She would hate me. Um, we would fight like cats and dogs. Um, yeah, Emma and I would, we would oil and water, but don't mistake that fighting, that theory in fighting for disrespect. I adore the woman. I love her. I respect her. Um, Yes, Jay. Uh, fully automated gay luxury space communism. That's 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 the fucking meme. Um, I still never... I don't think I got a follow-up on that. What are your political views? Like, I don't think they narrowed the scope of that question. Oh, what do you think about Joe Biden with Afghanistan? I think Joe Biden followed through on a fucking Trump deal that was a shit fucking deal from the Bush administration who fucking was carrying on from the Reagan administration who was carrying on from the fucking Brits who was carrying on from a fucking thousand years of turmoil in that region. Honestly, we shouldn't have been there in the first place. And I mean, short of we could, we could have gotten a few more people out ahead of the full withdrawal. We could have, like, evac'd a shit ton of people. But beyond that, that Band-Aid needed ripping off. to shit situation, no matter how you, however you split it. We shouldn't have been in there in the first place. But, you know, they've got a trillion dollars worth of uh, mineral resources in the region. And that's not even counting the oil. So somebody's going to be there for sure. And it looks like the CCP is taking their turn at the wheel. Um, they'll learn their lesson eventually, just like everybody else does. Everybody's tried it. Everybody's tried it. Pakistan's tried it. Saudi Arabia's tried it. The Brits have tried it. The, UK, uh, the, the U.S. has tried it. The fucking Greeks tried it. Seriously. Like this, this has been tried for a thousand, fifteen hundred, maybe even more. Um, no, because it goes into prehistory. Honestly, this has been tried for millennia at this point. The Chinese will learn their lesson too. So, you know, like I said, we could have, we could have, we could have withdrawn, or we could have evac'd some more people that needed evacing ahead of schedule. And provided, you know, visas and temporary residencies and that sort of thing. But beyond that, it's a shithole to start with. Um. Oh, Aka, do we have an over-under on how long it'll take the media to rehab Trump's image and how they're doing with GWB and his paintings? Um, hmm. I don't know. We have an over-under going on um, fucking CCP losing their shit there. All right. Uh, Marcus, thank you for the biddies, by the way. All right. I got to go to sleep for work tomorrow. If you stream Friday night and do open call shit, I may have, I have many stories already just a few weeks in. If you, uh, if you want to hate your fellow man in the meantime, good night. And let's enjoy feeling terrible about everything. Marcus, take care of yourself, man. And yeah, uh, you know, I should, I took two days off already this week. I'll fucking, I'll stream Friday. Um, sorry, sailor. I didn't see you fucking mention that. Um, other than that, sailor, we're gonna, we're just gonna check out of that. I already agreed to skip over it for the most part. So that's, that's all I'm going to fucking say on it. Um, Nah, Joe. We're just we're just gonna fucking move on past that as a as a topic now. Um, what book should I read next? What book did you read last? Go to or got to? Sorry, not go to. Got to. Um, what uh, what did you read last? Did I give you a book recommendation and you read it? Like, uh, what did you read last? And I'll point you in the next direction. Um. you want to oh okay so that wasn't my recommendation then um i don't do fiction these days um here's the quarterly journal of economics is the last book i read from this week um 
Snow Crash by Neil Stevenson, if you want fiction. Um, that is my second favorite book. My, my favorite is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. Um, a trilogy in five parts. And if you understand the humor behind that, you'll get along just fine with The Hitchhiker's Guide. Um, good night, Zippy. Take care of yourself. Um, yeah. Yeah, Snow Crash by Neil Stevenson would be my go-to if you want something new. <clears throat> Uh, Roger uh, Zelazny's uh, Chronicles of Amber. Interesting. Um, the one that I've been trying to get myself into, like, I just, I don't have, between everything, just, just managing you little fucking anarchistic monkeys on the Discord server takes up fucking hours a day. Um, I've been trying to get into the culture series. Um, I, 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 I've been meaning to, I have them downloaded, like, uh, the culture novels by e, uh, Ian M. Banks, um, it seems really interesting, um, but I've yet to manage, yeah, that's what I've heard, Joey. I, I've 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 heard that about the first iteration, whatever the fucking the first one is. Um, consider uh, Flebus, Flebus, or whatever the fuck that first one is. I've heard that that's a that's sort of a sl a slog to get through, and that it plays best if you go back to it. But I'm gonna do it in the order that he wrote it, if, if and when I ever get to it. Um, yeah. Uh, TLDR, Amber is order versus chaos with people, people capable of traveling between realities, stretching between complete order and total chaos. Oh, interesting. Um, okay, good philosophical read if I have any recommendation. Um, no. Um, no. No. Just off the top of my head, no. I, I wouldn't give you, like, unless you're looking to read about the meta ethics of post anarchism or something like that, I don't have any philosophical recommendations for you. I do have, uh, I mean, you know, in my collection, I have some intense philosophy, you know? I mean, the, the Cambridge Companions to Philosophy series, like, the complete thing. It's, if I listed all of the shit that's in the the Cambridge Companions to Philosophy series, like it's dude, it's it's a fucking mile long. Um, so, but yeah, I don't I don't have anything off the top of my head for that. Um, okay, so. Okay, Zomo was recommending. I, I I like I keep a book list. I do keep a book list. Um, Roger Zelazny's Chronicles of Amber. All right, I'll add that to the book list. Thank you, uh, thank you, Zomo. Um, Uh, you are a oh, welcome got to um, well Lada, there is no book command uh, there is I I've been meaning to work on it's it's one of the post-it notes um, is a reading list um, it's it's on the to-do look any of you fuckers want to crowdsource this shit like that's if you guys want to go full community on this like you know we can we can make that happen like if anybody ever wants to take work off of kai's plate and you know the books he recommends and shit like that by all means go for it and i will just copy and paste shit into channel commands and stuff like that um but you know yeah there's only so much time in the day and i also need to relax um Carpe! Um, oh, I wouldn't go... Okay, so Carpe, if you were using... If you're going Audible and you've got credits to spend, I wouldn't spend it on anarchist texts. 
I just recommended this, Snow Crash by Neil Stevenson, or Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the first book as read by Stephen Fry. It is sublime. It is sublime. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, as read, as narrated by Stephen Fry, is one of the greatest things you can listen to, plain and simple. So if you want something, go with that. Don't don't bother with some, like, anarchist fucking audiobook. They're, they're all dry as shit anyway. Car- uh, carpet. It's honestly... Stephen Fry narrating. I wish he had done the whole series, but he didn't. He only did the first book, and it breaks my heart to this day. It is so amazing to listen to. So Snow Crash by Neil Stevenson or The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy um, as read by Stephen Fry. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, the Douglas Adams narrated versions are interestingly dramatized too. I I really do prefer, as much as I love Douglas, I much prefer the, the... Stephen Fry narrated version. He's just got he's got the drama. He's got the drama. Um Oh, okay. Um cool, Cassidy, by all means. And if you need me to like fill in any gaps or anything like that, just let me know, Cassidy. And then we'll just we'll fucking add it to a command or something. Um It is yeah, from what I understand, the Martian science is actually fairly accurate. Um, Puka, I have watched and listened to and the entire fucking thing. Um, there's there's very little Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy media I haven't consumed over the years. Um, I tried playing the game. The game is fucking brutal. It's it's rough. I, I never... I don't even think I got past, like, the first fucking part of that game. Um... Yep, Gemma. Uh, Cryptonomicon is usually the one Neil is known for, but in my opinion, Snow Crash is better. Um, and a few of you, if you have a library card... And you're, if you're on the Discord server and you have a role called the library card, a few of you have access to the stuff I'm talking about. So. You don't even, you know, yeah. Seven Eves was a trip. Yeah, it's... Oh. <sighs> Rev. Alan Dean Foster is a writer. He's got fun ideas, but he's equivalent to a bad, fun, bad movie in terms of his storytelling. Um, David Foster Wallace. Do you guys realize that the majority of you were alive? For one of the top American writers of all time. I'm not kidding you. One of the greatest writers this country has ever produced was a man by the name of David Foster Wallace. And he was alive in the in the 2000s. He took his own life. He's universally ranked as one of the best writers this country has ever produced. He's pretentious, he's dense, he's academic, but read him, read him, read him. It's, it will make you work. David Foster Wallace will make you work. It's not going to be, he's not going to fucking serve you the, the, the reading on the platter, right? It's not going to be a cakewalk. He's going to make you earn that. And you'll be better for it. You'll be a better reader. You'll be a better writer. You'll be a better thinker. Read some David Foster Wallace. Yes, infinite, je- infinite jest. Um, about that much of fucking like um, just reference notes and source material in the back. This is like these are the footnotes sort of thing. Here's the citations. Uh, it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, yeah. Um, if you want an entry into, um. David Foster Wallace, 
look up um, Consider the Lobster. And if you can get the audiobook version of Consider the Lobster by um, by Foster Wallace, um, then he read it himself. It is... And Zomo is like 3,000 pages. It's, it's not a small book. It's not a small book. Uh, Infinite Jest is difficult to read. It's difficult to read. It's in length, in length and complexity and in story structure. It is, it's difficult to read. It makes you work. But if you want an entry point, start with Consider the Lobster by David Foster Wallace. And if you can get the audiobook, get it because he wrote, he read it himself. It was a, a an essay that Gourmet Magazine hired him to write. He went to the Maine Lobster Festival, and he wrote about it in the same way that David Foster Wallace writes about everything. And it is it's it's a very good example. It'll take you like forty five minutes to listen to the audio version of this es- of this essay about a lobster festival. If you want to know how David Foster Wallace writes, that's a very good entry point. Um, Rev, it's difficult to make it through like any level of academic study and not hear about Infinite Jest or even exist in society and not hear about Infinite Jest. It is, it is one of the greatest American novels ever written. Honestly, like we're, it's weird, right? Like imagine being a contemporary of Shakespeare, right? Like Shakespeare wrote a play and like you were alive for when that shit was written. Right? That's 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 strange. David Foster Wallace was alive when you know he I was I was I was alive when David Foster Wallace wrote Infinite Jest. It's one of the greatest American novels ever written. It's weird, but it's true. Um yep. Yep, Kurt Vonnegut. Um Yeah, that's, I mean, even 4chan, 4chan builds a list of the the top novels. These are the top 100 novels you need to read. And even 4chan has uh, David Foster Wallace placed at number four of all time. Right? Like, even 4chan gets this. He is one of the greatest writers humanity has ever produced. And he lived in America, and he was alive in the 2000s. That's fucking strange as shit to me. Go read him. Hey, Duchess. Um, yeah. Um. Here you go. Uh, fucking. I'll, I'll put the, uh, here's the, uh, where's the, the message link? Copy message link. Um. There you go, Wither. It's it's responded to you in comments. Is the is the link? Are oh, you welcome, Deirdre? Uh, oh, Bukow- Bukowski is Bukowski is is intense to read. Yeah, Bukowski's up there. Um. Oh, we can't. Um. Uh, um. Wait, hang on. That's yeah. I can't. We got a um. W. I appreciate that. Uh, trust me. I. I. I appreciate that W, but that's that's TOS. That's copyrighted material, and we can't let that let that fly. Um, trust me, I breaks my heart that I had to delete that. Um, fun random fact about Neil Stevenson: He writes longhand on yellow quarter pads using a fountain pen. Despite having written so much cyberpunk, his process works best in pen, not a word processor. Apparently, it's maddening for his editors. Oh, I'd imagine. Um, ah, you're welcome, Wither. Yeah, like I mean, this is this is this is the list that like uh, 4chan's lit uh, their their board for literature has assembled. Okay, so they did 2014 to 2020. They do the top 100 book rankings of all time. And this is the the average. This is the compilation, right? One, Moby Dick, right? Um, so uh, Melville, um, uh, uh, fucking the brothers, uh, Karamazov, uh, I can never do this. Uh, Karamazov, uh, yeah, Karamazov um, by uh, Dostoevsky. Um, three. Ulysses by James Joyce, right? Four, 
Infinite Jest by David Foster Wallace. All right, so in the same breath that you're mentioning Melville and Dostoevsky and fucking James Joyce, you're mentioning David Foster Wallace. This motherfucker was alive in 2002 and shit. It, it's so weird to me that that's a thing. Um... Oh, Snow Crash. Carpe. Snow Crash by Neil Stevenson. Yeah, that that's that's what you're after. Uh Carpe, is there any Homer on that list? There is, I do believe. Um yeah, like it's it's honestly um here is here's the link to the attachment so you if you want it. Like this is this is the link. Um but I mean, you know, yeah, Cervantes fucking you know even the bible god is just on there like you know but kafka dante borges tolstoy uh, you know marquez fucking yes the uh, the odyssey is uh, yeah homer homer is at number 20 um uh, you know orwell proust shakespeare right he fucking david foster wallace number four it's intense um I write books and publish online, but they're not safe for work. Not very not safe for work. Erotic romance. That's all I'm saying. Hey, Zilmo. Fucking there's room all over the place for that sort of thing. Um, yeah, Rev, uh, if I recall, most of them were on my AP literature list in 2008. Yeah, no, it's a good list. It's a good list. Just because it's like, oh, 4chan assembled this. It's going to be. No, no. This is honestly some of this is the greatest literature mankind has ever created. With maybe the exception of the Bible, though it's a hell of a science fiction read. Um, carpet, yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Um, oh no, Zomo, no worries. Um, <laughs> uh, actually, it was like. 12 chan or some shit like that 8 chan i forget rev it was one of the other chans that was responsible that for that apparently um yeah 8 coon or some shit like that like i i forget fucking which one but i don't think it was 4 chan yeah 8 chan there we go <laughs> Yeah, that, that, it always trips me out that I lived at the same time as David Foster Wallace. It's, it's just one of those things that fucks with my head. Um, that it, see, that's, that's sort of the, the, the point that you have to get across, right? Public is that like the, the, it, 4chan's lit, um, their literature board. These are actually some highly educated literature nerds. <laughs> Like straight up, like they, they have very good taste in literature. There's there's no getting around that. Um Yeah, Premier Oh yeah. Bible's an alright fantasy novel if you don't mind authors that repeat themselves over and over for no good reason. Uh so you know, yeah, that's there's Kai's rant on uh, on reading David Foster Wallace. Just go do it. It's going to be work. It's going to be work, but go do it, please. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's that's um, my number one favorite book of series of all time is Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I adore I do, I adore Douglas Adams. Um, but number two is Snow Crash by Neil Stevenson uh, because I'm a geek at heart. Right. And cyberpunk speaks to my soul. And I unabashedly uh, just shamelessly uh, steal from Snow Crash anytime I need a quick mission for a cyberpunk fate game I'm ran running. It's like, oh, shit, I need inspiration. Quick, choose a random spot in Snow Crash and turn it into a mission really quickly. I'll just steal from that book. It's great for that sort of thing. Um... Zomo, I'm going to go out on a limb and say the movie. 
I think the movie did it. I think the movie did it justice. I think the movie did it justice. I think um, I think most deaf did a great job as Ford. I I think that you know yeah no I like the movie. I like the movie. Unironically, I think the movie does does the movie justice. Yeah, sure, they had to trim a bunch of shit. It's a movie. What are you gonna do? But I I, I do. I really I really like the movie. Um. Cool. I just got that one in Infinite Jest. Rock on. Carpe. Infinite Jest is going to be a whole fucking thing. It's hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. And you may actually need a physical copy to reference because it's like that. Like, the, the book is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Um... It is 1,079 pages long at 488,940 words. Um, it has 388 endnotes with endnotes having their own footnotes as well in some instances. Uh, yeah, it, it is... It's a thing to read Infinite Just. Yeah. It's a thing. Um, Oh yeah, Sam Rockwell did it did okay. Yeah, he did okay. He did okay. I he did okay. He did good. He did fine. He did fine. Um I wanna I don't wanna nitpick, but oh, the the head location. That was that was what got a bunch of fans riled up. They're like, why the fuck did you move the head location? But you know, whatever. Crix. Crix Act! It's never gonna get old for me, man. It's never gonna get old for me. I don't know what it what is. It's just that it's that hard X and then that up with the ack. It's something. Crix Act! Um. Thank you. Thank you. Um. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, that's a lot of the fans were like, dude, what was it, the head thing? Uh, that bothered a bunch of fans. Um, so. <sighs> yeah, the, the, the head weirded people out. Um, and yeah, I wish they didn't cut the budget. There was a whole bunch of stuff. But honestly, I think they did good. I think they did good. I, I was happy with the movie. I was happy with the movie. Um, yeah. So. Take that for what it's worth. Um, <laughs> I was happy with everything but the head weirdness. It, 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 it got, it, yeah, it bothered a lot of fans. The head thing on Zaphod, uh, Zaphod um, bothered a lot of fans. Yeah. I, you know, take it for what it's work, uh, worth. Uh, what did he, what did he do? I am not even aware of this author. Um, Aka? Yeah, I'm, I'm having to fucking pull him. Uh, Haruki Murakami. Mm, I don't think I've ever... I, I, don't, I don't think I've ever read anything that he's written. Maybe I've seen something that was based on, but honestly... Yeah, he doesn't... He's not familiar to me. Um, yeah, whatever this is, downvote. Um, I like most things with the, uh, Bill Nye. Um, yeah, Bill Nye is fucking always a treat, isn't he? Oh, 
Oh, yeah, yeah, Rev, it's the position of the head. He had two heads in the book. It's the position of the head that's different. Um, The romance plot for Arthur and Trillian as well. Oh, God. It's just, you know... Hollywood, right? They're going to do what Hollywood does. But honestly, most deaf as Ford for me was a revelation. I know a lot of fans didn't like him. I loved him. I think most deaf did an amazing job as Ford. Hey, Brooke. Um... Yeah, I forget what he's what he calls himself these days. He's not most deaf anymore. He's something else entirely. Um, but you know, he'll he'll always be most deaf to me. He he actually bestowed the title, the name, the moniker of most deaf on Stephen Colbert. When he changed his name, he went and did an interview with Stephen Colbert back in the old days, and Stephen asked him, "Can I have the name?" And he said yes. Like he bestowed upon him the, the the title of most deaf. So technically, these days, most deaf is Stephen Colbert. Yasin Bay. Uh, Yasin. Yeah, it's Yasin Bay. There you go. Um, yeah, it's. Hey, tis to give away, but he'll always be most deaf to me. I do not think so, Kaiser. I mean, I'd have to check, but I'm pretty sure I haven't. Um, no, no. No, I haven't. Um, hmm, interesting, Akka. It's okay. Don't worry about it, Akka. That's, that's far from a wall of text, but... I love how you worded that, Gemma. I love how you worded that. For the record, if any of you haven't read the Earthsea novels from Ursula Le Guin, uh, Le Guin, um, Le Guin um, consider changing that. Uh, yeah, um, there's, that's, that's just, I love the wording of that one. Um, I, I just don't do fantasy. It's never been my thing. I stick to sci-fi and cyberpunk. Um, oh, and as a child, mysteries. That was my jam. Mysteries and then murder mysteries later on. Um, yeah, I, I, I was... Um, <laughs> Wario died in Zimbabwe. Thank you for the follow. Um, yeah, I was, um, I was like one of the like Nancy Drew Hardy Boys sort of territory as a as a child, and then I grew into like some older stuff, Dick Francis and Agatha Christie eventually, right? Like Encyclopedia Brown as well, uh, Rev Encyclopedia Brown as well, um, and eventually, you know, yeah, you get to you get to the greats. Right? You get to Sherlock, you get to Agatha Christie. Um, I, not many people know who Dick Francis is. I don't expect you to know who Dick Francis is. Um, but he did a shit ton of jockey, horse racing themed murder mysteries because he was uh, a jockey for the Queen of England. Like that's, he, he actually was a royal jockey. 
um, and that was his world. So he wrote about his world, um, but he was a murder mystery writer uh, in addition to that. And it was just a fascinating peek into a world. I, I read, I think, all, most of his books. Let's just put it that way. Um, and Cleve Cussler. It's pronounced Cleve, not Clive, just so everybody knows. Um, Cleve Cussler as well. Um, yep, you gotta, gotta get the Dirk Pit. Fucking. Ah. Uh, yeah, that's. <laughs> You're my files for the win. Um. Yeah. Uh, what about, oh, uh, Dashiell Hammett, that's, um, fucking, Jesus Christ, uh, Maltese Falcon, right? Uh, it's been a minute, like, yeah, there was a few of those, but, yeah. Um, I read, I read the Maltese Falcon, um, but, I've also seen it, um, but, yeah, I, I don't think I've read anything past that, uh, for Hammett. Yeah. Interesting. Morgan Freeman has been trying to do a uh, ra uh, rendezvous with Rama movie um, since 1990. He owns the rights. Interesting. A Morgan Freeman, Arthur C. Clarke. That'd be interesting. I'd be down. How has he not gotten that made? He's Morgan fucking Freeman. Try harder, bitch. Like, that just tells me he doesn't want to actually do it. Because if Morgan Freeman said, I want this movie made, somebody will make it. It's Morgan goddamn Freeman. I don't buy that for a second. He's just too busy and hasn't gotten around to it or something like that. I, I'm, I, I refuse to be convinced that Morgan Freeman doesn't have enough pull in Hollywood to get his pet project made. That's, I'm sorry. That dude, that dude could fucking... He could be like, I want to do a live-action Teletubby reboot with me as the fucking son. And they'd be like, bam, we're doing it. I don't, uh, yeah, I wonder what that's about. Huxley's Island formed some of my earliest anarchist opinions. Uh, love that book in high school. Um, yeah, fucking, yeah, dude, Brave New World in 1984 were formative for me. They were. Um, actually, I think I've read some Alistair McLean. Um, and yeah, it's, it's Mac. Yeah. Um, Gemma, it's M-A-C. Um, yeah. Guns and Navarone and Ice Station Zebra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. And now I need to see that. Um, don't get me started on Dune. Uh, ah, fucking hey, hey, nowhere. Um, Dune never did it for me. Dune never did it for me, which is weird. Um, uh, okay, so here's here's my thing. All right, I, I Dune Dune just doesn't click for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zomo, send it on over. Drop it. Um, no, Dune Dune doesn't do for me. Foundation. The Foundation series by Asimov. This is the one that does it for me. Hey, Scott. It's been, uh, oh, dude, it's been a fucking day. It's been a day, Scott. Um, but, you know, we're having, we're having like a literature talk right now. Adia, thank you for the nine fucking months. Look at you, Adia. Um, yeah, we're talking about literature and like various other things right now. Um, yeah, for me, like foundation fills in where Dune normally takes people, uh, occupies the space for people, sort of that grand fucking span of time and geopolitical conflict in a galactic scale 
and those sorts of things. Yeah, for me, it's Asimov's Foundation, uh, which, by the way, is coming to Apple TV Plus or TV, but what, whatever Apple TV's thing is. Um, it's coming to that this year sometime. Hey, Astral. Um, so somebody's going to try. Somebody has tried. Somebody literally um, has tried to capture the grandeur, the spectacle, the span of Foundation. So we'll see how that goes. I'm sure it will do really, really well. As things fall apart. Oop, hey now. Stop, stop scrolling, bitch. There you go. Alright, um... Kaiser, I'll add it to the list. It's, you know, I've got... I gotta, I gotta, dude, honestly, I could stop streaming, like, I could disappear tomorrow and move to the hills, and I've got a, I've got a reading list that will last me well past death. It's ridiculous at this point. Uh, Sven, no, I have an injured ankle, I will not redeem a skirt spin. Um... The Amazon Prime Lord of the Rings is actually something really in base, too. <laughs> um, I'm not, I'm not a Lord of the Rings guy. I don't like fantasy. I don't like high fantasy. I don't like that sort of stuff. I respect, hey, himself. Thank you for the, the sub. Um, I, 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 I've never, I don't do, I don't do the fantasy. I, I respect Tolkien immensely. Creating languages and maps and cultures and societies and that world building that he did. I have, I have the utmost respect for him as a creator, as an author, as, you know, all of that. Not my thing. Not my genre. Uh, and Zomo, don't think I let that go. I've got the link pulled up in chat. Uh, pulled up on my uh, on my browser. I'm going to watch it here in stream in a second. Or in, in, a, in a little bit. So, Zomo, don't think I let that just pass. Um, oh, apparently we're close to doing a capitalism. Um, hey, f oh, fr we're free market anarchists now. Hey, hey um. I presume, uh, oh, no, you might actually be somebody new. Like, you, you're not actually. No, oh, yeah, you're without. Okay, yeah, 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 you're without. All right. I, I just assumed, since you, 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 <laughs> I, I actually assumed it was you without. Um, love being safe if you follow. Um, <laughs> let's see. We got, um, you want to find audiobooks? This is absorbable. Uh, do you find, hey, biddies, Aka, a capitalist biddies. Um, it looks like, yeah, it looks like we may have kicked off a capitalism. Um, nope. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So 60, 69% level one hype train. Um, so you're like 61 and 69% to completion of a level one i don't fucking know how it works i never pay attention to it do you find uh audiobooks this is as absorbable or vice versa weird word reading uh wording weird um cricks um i actually it just depends if i'm doing something like infinite jest i need the physical copy to reference as i go along um i find that for dense texts audiobooks do not work for me for full absorption i will go along with them like i can pull out the book and follow along in places that i need to follow along i'm good with that um but for fiction i actually do prefer audiobooks um yeah i prefer i prefer the audiobooks for non uh learning right non-academic purposes non-theory learning purposes these sorts of things I prefer um, audiobooks, but if it's going to be dense, if I've got to earn it, if I got to work for whatever is in this, then I don't mind listening to the audiobook. It helps, um, but I'm I'm going to want to consult the text. I'm going to want to highlight. I mean, you guys, you guys see how I work, right? Like this is this is me, right? Like I I I highlight, I fucking tab, I you know this is this is how I this is how I work. So, yeah. Um, I 
I was a mutualist before and now. Jesus. Um, as books is the subject, somebody I learned a lot in a very short, uh, short time while recommended me, Blessed is the Flame. Uh, but the subject makes me scared of reading it, so I want a second opinion, even aside from how heavy uh, emotionally. So random opinions from random people on the internet. Um, that's the the concentration camp resistance, isn't it? Um, I don't think I've ever made it through it. Right? Like, I know what it's about, but I don't think I've ever actually read it through. Um... Yeah, it's like, hang on, it's like Serafinsky or something like that. Let me let me look it up. Uh, yeah, Serafinsky. Um, yeah, concentration camp resistance and anarcho nihilism. Um. I'm just scanning it really quickly because it's not that long. You'd be fine. You'd be fine. There's nothing in there that's a lot of. I just I just gave it a quick look. There's nothing in there that's going to be too traumatizing. Um. I'll add it, to, add it to the fucking list, uh, Scott. I'll add it to the list. Um, I'm just, I'll never get through this reading list. I'm gonna fucking bequeath my reading list to somebody. <clears throat> All right, now give me a sec, um, because I want to see this fucking video of fucking Morgan Freeman explaining, like, I, I, I want to hear this. I want to hear this from fucking Morgan Freeman. You've been, for, for a while now, you've been attached as a producer to Rendezvous for Rama, which, or with Rama, which is, I think, one of the great pure science fiction pieces. What is it that, that draws you into a genre piece? I know a good script when I read it. I certainly know a good story when I read it. Uh, Rendezvous with Rama was one of the best science fiction books ever. And, 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 and it's been picked at over the, the years. People have borrowed. Adia. Adia. Are you in fucking chat? Are you here right now, Adia? You little bitch, you snuck into my town and you didn't say shit to me? We gonna hang out? <clears throat> we gonna we gonna get a cup of tea or something? Cause you best believe Of course you're coming through the airport, so you probably got like the, the fucking Delta and the Lambda variants now. Um so, you know, we're gonna we're gonna toss you into a quarantine bubble. Um, but I'll fucking only here for a layover. Boo, boo, boo. I say boo, boo. That's a shame, Adia. That's a shame. Um, next time, maybe. All right. A lot of stuff from it, but the essence of Rendezvous with Rama is still there. Uh, a, a story like Rendezvous with Rama forces us to ask a lot of Oof, questions. Scott. Oof. That we, some of us have asked, mostly scientists. <laughs> we, uh, some. Um, religious people. Uh, but the main question, the main question extant for science fiction buffs is, are we all there is? Are we alone? 
So Rendezvous Rama was clever about the book is obviously we're not alone, but we don't know what kind of entity exists outside of us. Just that there is something clever enough to build. For breaking entertainment news. I why can't he get this made? It's fucking Morgan goddamn Freeman. If he wants a movie made. That movie's getting made. I don't understand why Rendezvous with Rama uh, ha hasn't been made. If he's if he owns the rights to the script, that's, that's just that's mystifying to me. That's mystifying to me. That man could snap his fingers and Hollywood just fucking jump. I, I know. Morgan goddamn Freeman with one of Arthur C. Clarke's greatest works. Like, I, I don't understand how this hasn't been made yet. How do we not have a Morgan Freeman produced Rendezvous with Rama yet? How has it not happened? <sighs> Weird as shit. Weird as shit. That's all. I, I don't. I don't. I got nothing for it. But I mean, Gemma. Oh, I don't. I don't know if I thanked you, Gemma. But I mean, I, I know I mentioned something about the the library card. Don't fucking worry. But, but you know, thank you nonetheless, Gemma, for the biddies. Um, who cares? There's all sorts of weird art films and shit that people make. Passion projects that that like a list celebrities call the you know they call the fucking uh, the 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 favor in for. It's like, hey, I made you a hundred million dollars last year my project we're doing this you know it's morgan fucking freeman honestly yeah i don't i don't understand why yeah it, 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 sorry, so anybody anybody would fucking jump at that project i don't understand what the deal with that is Eh, Gemma. Eh, he's made, dude. What is what is Morgan Freeman's box office tally? Two point six five billion dollars. Two point six five billion dollars he could snap his fingers yeah it was a private worth of 250 million I I I, I don't understand how that movie hasn't been made um Sivza, Sivza, welcome. Hello there. I say God knows, but that would be a callback. Um, yeah, that's that's fucking weird. Zomo, it's Zomo that brought this to my attention. Zomo, I, I blame you for you're causing a mind fuck. Now I'm confused. I blame you, Zomo. I blame you. Um, you're welcome. <laughs> oh yeah, that's 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 the weirdest shit. It's like it's your first time on the fucking channel, and already you managed to fuck my brain. Good job. Cheers to you, Zama. <clears throat> oh, I miss Craig Ferguson. I miss Craig Ferguson. I miss Craig Ferguson, dude. I miss Craig Ferguson. Yeah.
Yeah, yeah. I, I don't binge it, but I go back oca on occasion sometimes and and watch. Like, God, he was good at what he did. Ah, gives a shit. I make complete... Honestly, Gemma, I make complete exclusions for comedians. If you're actually funny, if you're actually good at your job as a comedian, yeah, I don't care. I don't care. Like, I, I, I give carte blanche to functional proficient comedians say what you got to say i'm okay with it um i miss carlin dude carlin got out at the right time carlin would have literally stroked out on stage because of the trump presidency like i honestly he would have fucking stroked out on stage we would have watched george carlin die live as he just like blew a fucking fuse yeah. Um. Yeah. George tapped out at the right time. He did. Um. I don't know if it's still going on, Gemma, but um, Adam and a bunch of the people associated with Grant Imahara were s auctioning off like Mythbusters and other memorabilia that Grant worked on um, and that the, they collectively worked on to raise money for the uh, Grant's, uh, the foundation that has been set up in Grant's name. Um, so just, I mean, that's, that's a thing that's happening. Um, like you can buy like stuff from Mythbusters and stuff from the various studios and stuff that Grant worked on. Yeah, to fund his foundation. Um. <clears throat> oh, Rev, who the fuck knows? Because, 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 I mean, it's sad, but it's true. It's a big fucking dick, right? Like, it's phallic. They're projecting their penis. They're they're projecting their power into space. It's fucking Freudian. It's so pathetic. Ugh. Nobody, nobody, dude. Without, nobody cares. <laughs> unless you got something new. Like, unless you, what do you got? What do you got without? Yeah, we're... We're well past that. Um. Yeah, I caught one of those videos, Viva. Yeah, I feel. Oh, it was um, it was the Newton's cradle that uh, Jamie had built. Um, that he that is one of the pieces being auctioned off. Yeah. Christ, Astral. Funny thing, the scrapper, um, or scraper, but scrapper designed by my company literally is a set of three buildings that looks like dick and balls. Um, yeah, I, you know. I've never gone looking, but I've never heard anything bad about Grand MR. He, he agreed. He just seemed like a dude who just got to do what he enjoyed doing. Um, yeah, it's a shame he died. Admittedly, at least we still have Adam Savage. It's always been my favorite. Um, yes, um, Rev, that is true. Um, there are multiple international treaties, um, that dictate the, the claiming of objects in every space, but we know how that goes when the powers that be are involved. Um, there's also federal law, um, of which Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos are subject to in the United States, um, that dictates to them as citizens and to their corporations as legal entities that they're not allowed to own anything out there. Um, but again, see the history of the United States and adherence to international treaties or legal agreements therein. So, you know, good luck with that. 
Hey, Rumble. Nice, Viva. Nice. <clears throat> God told me that's not cool. Oh. Really? I mean, we'd already we'd already have mines on Mars run by fucking robber barons. Well, that's unequivocally um, false, crazy. Admit. We, we have literally no legal claim to it. And we're a signatory on the treaty that dictates as such. And we have our own federal law that reiterates that. You know. Um, it has an opportunity, Scott, but have you seen The Expanse? That's our future. Minus the weird alien goo that creates a portal, right? Min minus that. The Expanse is our future. I truly believe that. I, I think that they got it as spot on as you could probably get it. Yeah. Yeah, we're not lucky enough for alien goo. Um, Exol, basically, we colonize Mars, and then we colonize the asteroid belt. And two, uh, three separate groups then are created. You've got the Terrans, the Earthers, right? In, in the Expanse, they're called Earthers, um, but the Terrans, right? And then you have the Martians, and then you've got the, the Belters, and there's three distinct societies that then begin to emerge and they have their own societal norms they have their own cultural allegiances the belters are of course subject to corporate rule for all intents and purposes the martians have their own planetary governance and then the earthers make claim to everything even though functionally they have no claim to a whole bunch of shit you can imagine how that works out the Martians and the Earthers are constantly at war. The Belters are essentially indentured servants who are on leased property, uh, are on leased time all the time, re drinking recycled water and breathing recycled air. And you're lucky if you get what we give you, right? And if you're born a Belter, you're basically born a slave for all intents and purposes. If you're born a Martian, you're born with an inferiority complex and you have a, a they get militaristic and they have something to prove against the Earthers. And the Earthers have a set, an air of superiority because they're from the home planet. Yeah. And then, you know, as Astral said, you know, the Belters become terrorists because that's their only option. They can't wage warfare. They have to wage asymmetric warfare rather than symmetric warfare. It's a whole fucking thing. But yeah, no, the Expanse got it correct. It's where we're headed. <clears throat> hey, skeptic. Um, fair enough, Rumble. It turns out the humans can live on Mars for prolonged periods. They're actually going to be physically weaker than Earth humans because weaker gravity. Uh, yeah, they actually, like, there's a whole fucking thing about how the the Martian soldiers train to um, be stronger than, than uh, Earthers um, in space combat because when they come back to Earth, like, they are physically weaker. 
Um, the gravity does a number on them. Their physiology get, just gets fucking run through the the gauntlet as a result of that. So they're they're actually uncomfortable on Earth. Um, the sun, the fucking gravity, all these sorts of things. Yeah. Um, it skeptic. It takes time. It takes time. It takes time. You. you it takes time. It may not, it may take months, skeptic. It may take months. Be prepared, especially the way you hyper-focus, especially the way you hyper-focus. Yeah. Yeah, Puka, it, it actually kind of is, yeah. Yep, or the, how they'll torture the belters by holding them up by their shoulders in normal earth gravity. Yeah. It's, I, I truly think the Expanse got it correct. I think that that's our future. And it's super uncomfortable to read or watch. that god we're gonna have to write rules that's a whole fucking thing jesus christ i'm just i'm just still back to i'm i'm back at the beginning of the show i'm back at the beginning of the show and what we have to do as a community and the changes we have to make now it's gonna be a whole thing um Rumble, I'm gonna look into that. Um Oh, I remember these things. Yeah, like it doesn't it doesn't fucking it didn't ring a bell at all. But yeah, I remember seeing the designs of these. Okay, so this guy's the inspiration for Ring World and fucking Rama, basically. All right, fair enough. <clears throat> yeah, Zomo, that's the thing is that sort of thing eventually. I mean, eventually it'll be public domain and then it's fair it's fair game. Yeah. yeah. There's no way to, to really do that in perpetuity without high levels of shit fuckery. I mean, they can. Without. They can. Uh, his son has all rights as an active author. As long as his son and then his son's son and his son's son or daughter or, you know, as long as the progeny keeps... Working at it, the original works, though, will eventually enter public domain. Disney has made sure that that, that date has been pushed, pushed, and pushed, and pushed. But eventually, the original works will enter public domain. This is how it works. So eventually, there will be TV shows and movies based off of those works. There's not much they can do to prevent it. Outside of becoming a multi-billion dollar multinational corporation that uh, holds Congress people in their pockets. Yeah, we already talked about it, Skeptic. There's a bunch of people here that I don't do Dune. I'm a Asimov Foundations guy um, rather than... Uh, Frank's fucking uh, Dune. I, I just never got into Dune. To do it justice, yes. Well, that's Gemma. 
Gemma, that's that's right there. Do you, do you, okay. To do it justice, they don't care if they do it justice. Dude, you've seen some of the... The Avatar movie? The Dragon Ball Z live action? The Fist of the North Star live action? Oftentimes, Hollywood doesn't give two shits if they do it justice. They're willing to bastardize it. And that is the problem. Um, no. Interesting, though, Zomo. Interesting. The correct answer was Kaiser. And Vivo. What's wrong with Avatar? It's the highest grossing movie. Yes, exactly. Oh, you mean um, Dances with Wolves in Space? I can't believe he's doing two more of those movies. It's fucking ridiculous. Three D Fern Gully. There's another take. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's the same fucking story. It's the same fucking story. I mean, granted, all stories are the same fucking story. It's all the monomyth. It's all Joseph Campbell. Um, so, I mean, you know, it's all the hero's journey. Take it for what it's worth. Um, <laughs> story girl. Um, how do you feel about Heinlein? Um, the story version of Starship Troopers, and don't get me wrong, the movie version is great. It is great. It's great. It's fucking great. And I love that so many people missed the point of Starship Troopers. In hindsight, more people seem to realize what Starship Troopers is about, but in the moment, contemporarily, nobody... So few people, so few people understood Starship Troopers. Like, oh, it's fucking, we're killing alien bugs and shit. So many fucking people missed the point that we were the bad guys. We were the fucking fascists. We were the bad guys. So many people missed that. Trust me, it was weird as shit. Um, but the original story was also significantly different than the movie. Um... Scott, we're dressed in all brown. The movie openly talks about how fucking service in the military grants you citizenship. And there is a news broadcast in the movie talking about how we aggressed on them first and violated their space and they retaliated and were retaliating for their retaliation. I mean, it was kind of clear if you were paying a lick of attention. So, oh yeah, Rumble. No, it it straight was. It's very much political propaganda. Yeah, Starship Troopers in its origination is very much political propaganda. Hundred percent. Fair enough, Scott. Fair enough. I grant you that one. <clears throat> the Carlin rule of the average IQ does come into play. Admittedly, so. Um, yeah, Gemma. Yeah, it was, it was far more, yeah, it was more of a, a point of view or a single perspective, um, than, uh, the, 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 the movie was for sure. Um, and yeah, there most assuredly was more of an, uh, introspective take on, um, the imperialistic or fascistic approach that humanity was taking. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so, you know. Have they still not... Dude, seriously? Like they don't they have they've never they haven't released a high resolution copy of the Abyss? That's weird. You think that would happen? Um 
No. Without? No. I mean, we're we're not really talking about anarchism or economics right now. It's like, it's, it's it's not like we're purposefully ignoring you. It's just the conversation isn't there right now. We're in just chatting, even. Right, like. But no. I, you've never struck me that way. I don't think you've struck anybody else that way. So, if you're just having a particularly emotionally sensitive day and you're feeling like that, then, yeah, you know, because I didn't answer your previous question. It's because we're doing literature and movies and shit like that right now. So, but no, not in the least. Um... I want Korea to get over their Japanese racism so their films are less predictable. Um, all I remember about the abyss was blue tits and tentacles. Um, I think, dude, the thing that always stands out for the abyss for me is the breathing, the, uh, the oxygenated liquid. That's always the moment. That's, that's just, dude, that is so... Because those experiments have been done. Those experiments have been done on humans breathing oxygenated high, uh, uh, super oxygenated fluids and stuff. The last one I think a Navy SEAL did one of the tests. Imagine how terrifying that moment must be. In, in right? It, it, taking in the liquid into your lungs. All of evolution all of your being says don't do that i can only imagine that the strength of will that it takes to overcome that instinct yeah oh yeah there's been a few experiments uh zomo some some mildly successful um no no uh no without yeah, don't don't read anything into it. That without you're you're good. We're just not talking that stuff right now. That's all. Um. Oh yeah, nonsense. The rubber hand experiment or the um. Oh God, it's got another name. It's got another name. But yeah, it's it's the mirror. Uh, rubber hand thing. Um, oh god, the fucking Mensa thing. <laughs> Who wants to be in Mensa? It's fucking, it's easy. Um, all the videos I showed said try it with kids. Oh god, that's a little fucking dark. Um... Interesting rumble. Um, yeah, that that's the thing that always stands out to me about the abyss is is the breathing the li uh, oxygenated liquid. That's insane. Um, speaking of movies. Um. In movies with storied production cycles, I watch once a year. <clears throat> Aka, that doesn't surprise me. That doesn't surprise me at all. That Ed Harris punched James Cameron. <laughs> Fucking won't work with him again. Uh, once a year, I watch Apocalypse Now Redux. I watch it once a year every year. It, it's it's sort of a ritual. I I do it to remind myself how fucked shit shit can get. <clears throat> it's it's up there as far as war films go, and as far as psychological war films go, right? It, it is every year. 
I, I watch it, and it's just like, holy shit, man. Um, hey, Mr. Sir. I can watch that film anytime. I, I, it's, it's sort of tradition. Once a year I watch it, just to remind myself how weird, how fucked it can get. nonsense oh the geraniums monologue um apocalypse now redux uh, apocalypse now is is the movie uh wither um redux is a particular cut or edit of it um so there you go if you've never seen apocalypse now if you're if you're young or you're just weird and you've never watched Apocalypse Now. It's one of the greatest war movies of all time. Um, yeah. Give it a watch. Um, be aware, though. It gets fucked. It gets fucked up. Viva, yes. It's, it's the Vietnam one. Um, with the fire... that one um yeah nonsense I purposely avoided that movie actually I didn't watch it with Jason whatever the fuck or whoever the fucking that dude is that played him yeah I didn't see it I purposely avoided it um I also avoided the movie about Terrence McKenna that um, Jim Carrey played Terrence McKenna. I, I avoided that movie too. Yeah, I, I don't I don't need to have like. Um, well, I don't know if it came out or not. Nonsense. I'm not gonna be watching it plain and simple. Um, the horror. The horror. Yeah, dude. Apocalypse Now is. Watch it. If you haven't seen it, watch it. It's just, you know. It's going to get rough. It's going to get weird. Just know that. There's some shit in it that is real. That is real. Um, and you're not going to be able to unsee it. So, just, you know, know that. Um, is watching Apocalypse Now during the Apocalypse based? Yeah. Um. Wow, Kaiser. For somebody who literally has a, uh, a, a mathematician and a geneticist um, behind him for that sort of... Uh, there's, there's a highly reductive, uh, brilliant takedown of Terrence McKenna's life's work, Kaiser. For sure, you definitely would have uh, stood up to a debate with him. Um, he would have swept your leg and you wouldn't have seen what was coming. That was the saddest attempt to take down Terrence McKenna's um, stoned ape theory that I've ever seen in my life. Kaiser. I love you to death, but holy shit, that was a shit attempt. Um, yes, watch Redux, though. If you're going to watch Apocalypse Now, watch Redux. For sure, watch Redux. Don't watch the original uh, Apocalypse Now. Get the Redux version. Um, and ZOL, uh, Zoll, um, uh, oh, Jesus, that looks like German to me. That looks like German. Either way, um, thank you for the follow. Um... Hey, Got. What's up, man? Um. Yeah, I, I, I fucking. I think all of the older ones. Um, uh, <laughs> FIFA German. Ew. Um. Oh, I have too many thoughts on that one, Scott. Like, I, I could, I could go off. Like, I've heard. I've heard probably 150 to 200 hours of Terrence McKenna speaking. I've um, heard, you know, as far as that that crew, um, and no, no, I, I'm not even gonna get into it. I could go off for fucking hours. 
Um, I think there's merits. I think there's merits to a lot of that. Whether it's the actual history, whether it actually is the the Eucharist, whether it is the um, the um, the alchemical reaction that spurned on or spawned the the evolutionary cycle, um, I think that there's probably not as much merit to that argument. But I think when you start talking cultural evolution and societal evolution and religious evolution, which as a subset, I think that there's a lot of merit there. And I think given what we understand about the shamanic heritage of humanity and the psychopharmacological influences that shamanic uh, practices had on early religious or early re religiosity and the formative development uh, development of cycle developmental cycles of them i think there's merit there um and that's probably as far as i'm gonna get into that fucking thread or as far as i'm gonna pull that thread shall we say um Wait, what, uh, which one did you say? Sand Pebbles by Richard. That counts like a book. I never saw the movie, though. It's got Steve McQueen in it. Steve McQueen is always a win. Um, There she is. <sighs> you gotta understand, if you're not a car person. Oh, that sucks, Zippy. This is. Just putting that pick on the screen is a flex guy. <laughs> so, dude, this. If, if, you know. Yep. What's up, Krusty? Fucking Krusty will get this shit for sure. 62 year old uh, uh, dude. Yeah. Krusty will get this. Dude. This car. Yeah. I mean, this is this is straight pornographic to a generation of dudes, like straight up. This is this is masturbatory material. This car is as sexy as they get. Yep. It's dude, even for me. Like, I'm a bit of a car guy, though. See, that's the thing, is I, I actually am, despite all of the, the weird fabulousness and the, the, the aggressively gay tendencies. Dude, look at that. That is design and engineering. That is, that is art and engineering just melded together in perfection. That is, that is high art. Um, that's sexy as shit, Zomo. Hand built several engines, bolt by bolt, gas by gas. It. You had a '62 Mustang. Nice, fucking crusty. It's uh, you know, yeah. Um, if you want one of those, by the way. Um. Okay. So. So so everybody's aware. If you want one of those, I hope you have about $3.7 million in your pocket. Because that's what the last last time it sold for. Right? Like, the bullet, the 1968 Bullet Mustang sold, last sold for $3.74 million. 
you can buy a few of the best Ferraris for one of those. It is, that is sex on wheels. Uh, you just want a lot of, <laughs> you're a simple critter. Um, yeah, it, it's, you want to see what it looked like? Okay, here, here is, um, let's see if I can get you the page. We'll go over to Meekum. Meekum will have it. All right, here's the condition it was in. You see all this, all this fucking work that needs to be done? $3.74 million. Okay. Rust. Degraded. Right? $3.7 million. It's untouched. Oh, you don't restore that, Kvass. You do not restore that. If you restore that, you're fucking stupid. It'll it'll immediately plummet in price. If you touched that, you, there's there's a million car guys the world over who would fucking scream instantaneously. You don't touch that car. You don't you don't fix a fucking thing. Um. Yeah, just just watching Discord. <clears throat> Got to keep an eye on Discord these days, apparently too. All right, let me see before I just just check a few things. Stupidity, Scott. Stupidity. <laughs> Stupidity happened. Um, yeah, I don't think. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything I fucking I give a shit about that needs to be talked about. So. Yeah, I'll, I'll leave the fucking headlines in the dust. Mm, let's see. I mean, they're, they're all, let's see. Oh, fuck you. Um. All right. I went through a boatload of cars back then. Oh yeah, Krusty. Like that was that was the fucking greatest era of car ownership too. Like you could just you could buy them. You could fucking work a like corner job. You could work a like an average job and buy what would be classic automobiles. And you should fix them up and fucking sell them on and get a new one and rinse and repeat. That were present in Iraq. Um, oh god. Yeah, I don't know if I can abide by that. Uh, we'll see. Alright. Um, oh, good on you, Rev. <clears throat> good on you, Rev. Um... Mixing paint and delicious fumes, which may have caused a few moments. Yeah, for sure. Let's, um, where's my button? There's my button.
Oh god, what now, Twitch? What, what, what now, Twitch? <sighs> oh, okay, it's not some bullshit. Uh, you can now set all of your VODs to automatically unpublish by default, or you can choose to only auto-publish VODs or disable clips while streaming in specific categories. Alright, well, I'll take the feature. I'll take the feature. Zomo, thanks for hanging out. Take care. Nice meeting you as well. Um... So, we're going to raid over to Ricky. He's got less than 10. Um, so, that's what we're going to do. Tomorrow's a night show. 11.30 p.m. Um, yeah, you know, Gemma, we'll see what we get up to. As the community grows, Gemma, you know, as we push into that partner territory, I'm going to, you know, do less theory. Right? We have to be more accommodating as a community. Um, so, like, yeah, we'll talk about movies, we'll talk about literature, we'll talk about life, and all that sort of stuff. Um, it's just the way it's gonna be. Um, you know, yeah. We can only argue about politics for so much for so long. Um, so let's go, I hope this holds, we've got 69 people raiding over to Ricky, so, either way. <sighs> I hope you guys are as well as you can be. I'll, um... If somebody wants to do a decompress afterwards, <clears throat> Scott, I'll tell you what's up. Um, either way, I'll uh, I'll catch y'all later. <laughs>